media mode. Covers your story. Your story will be covered in the ground up. Welcome back to an all new episode of the Jason Lee Show. All right, my next guest is somebody who is respected by everybody in hip hop. Ever since I got to know this individual from afar, I heard that he was one of the most brilliant rappers in the industry. And as I've gotten to know him as a friend, he's become even a more important person to me and to everybody that he's met through me. Let's go ahead and give it up for Grammy Award uh, nominated artist and hip hop icon. I gotta say your name wrong. Joyner Lucas. <laughs> the pause is because it's always weird interviewing people that you actually get to know as friends. And we've developed this friendship uh, over the last, uh, I don't even know how long, how long has it been now? Since I did the, when is your, um, your, your award show coming back up? The Hollywood Unlock Impact Award, so it's been a year. About a year. Well, well, since we met. Mm -hmm. Are you being tight lipped because you don't know where I'm going to go? You know, he told me, he called me yesterday as a pre-interview. It was like an interlude. You know how I'm on songs and albums where they have those little 20 second moments just to let you know what's to come? He did this like brief phone call to just let me know. I better not act up. I'm not going to act up today. We good. We good. Now this is about a year ago. Okay, but thank you for coming on the show. And thank you um, last year when you participated in the award show. It just, it just hit me when we were honoring Tupac, somebody who... Uh, is so important to the culture in hip hop. And it was mm -hmm. the 50th anniversary of hip hop last year. And everybody was trying to figure out who to honor. And I thought, why would we not honor Tupac, one of the like greatest rappers of all time? Uh, and because of what the Impact Award stands for, Tupac is somebody who was also really important to culture and politics and you know, Black Lives Matter at a time before it became a, a, a hashtag on social media. Social media wasn't even around. And I thought that you were just the right person to do it. So I was glad that you came and did it. But were you nervous? I just didn't like the pit. Y'all try to play me with the picture that y'all you had you put in the background, and I in the, the crazy shit is I gave us. He asked me for some pictures to put when I walk up in the in the um, LED screen. What picture do I want? And I sent him like two or three good pictures. And when I walked out, and I looked at this screen, <laughs> he put this pitch, picture that I hate more First, than anything. That I was hate. a great picture, bro. I hate that. Picture. Well, that's I, the one picture that I you you picked the one you were evil. No, no, you no. picked this one picture that I hate more than anything in the world. You picked this picture. I hated the picture. I'm walking out. I'm looking at this like what the fuck, bro. And it just it fucked me up because I couldn't even focus. And okay, so the Impact Awards is the one time during my career that I get to sit in the audience with my friends, surrounded by lots of love. Everybody's embracing each other in a no homo kind of way. And I look on stage and he's standing there. I thought you were just extremely nervous because it's Tupac. That was you know? tight. That was tight. But now that you've told me the story and I went back and looked at it, you were really annoyed. I and, was mad. and when we edited it, we edit we had to tighten it up because you kept looking back at the image. I'm looking, yeah, I kept looking back like I really did. Okay. In all fairness, in all fairness, I was in con. France, I in the, on the French Riviera. I wasn't producing it. Rob did it. Yeah. I'm gonna put Rob <laughs> under the bus and whoever gathered the photos. I literally thought it was a great yeah, when photo. When I first got back, after I did the sh went backstage, I'm like, yo, man, I ain't gonna hold you. I never met this Jason. You thought <laughs> it was a setup? But this is rubbing me the wrong way today, bro. <laughs> I never met this. But I said, why the f he choose that picture? I hate that picture. <laughs> Well, like, that's that something show. that I now know that you and Candy Burrs have in common. Everybody thinks I pick all the pictures. I don't. I didn't pick the picture, but honestly, when I went back and looked at it, I thought it was a great picture. But um, but this is why we're learning over here at the Hollywood Unlock yeah. Compound that we need to make sure we have clear approvals on all the images. Mm -hmm. So next year uh, or this year, we won't have any more problems. Yeah, we good. We, we already. I, I already called you and was like, "What the f right after that." Show. I told him I thought it was great. No, but how was it though, um, honoring Tupac and being able to give the award to his sister? It was fire, man. I'm a huge uh, Pac fan. A lot of the storytelling records are, is influenced by a lot of the shit he did. You know, like the Brenda's got a baby, keep uh, keep your head up. I ain't mad at you. Like he was like, you know, one of the first artists that I really gravitated towards, like on the storytelling level. So, um, you know, I watch all the documentaries and like. Just got done watching Dear Mama. 
crazy, right? So I seen Dan Mama, and then, like, then you hit me up right after I was done watching Dan Mama. Like, yo, we should present the Tupac Awards. And I'm like, all right, that's fine. But the crazy part was, yeah. I thought to honor Tupac right after I watched the Dear, Dear Mama. Mama. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I was at home getting ready, and somebody said, have you seen the Dear Mama documentary? And I knew Leela Steinberg, his manager, mm -hmm. and... Uh, you know, so I said, no, let me, so I put it on and I put on the first episode and then I literally sat and watched the whole thing. It was, I think four episodes. And, uh, I call Ray Love and Leela on three way. Both of them. I said, yo, we have to honor Tupac. You know, I'm from California. He's, although not born in California, he was California love. But, but then I thought about you and I had been listening to some of your music and I thought w there was a common thread between you and him in storytelling. Mm -hmm. Like I feel now we live in a world where everything is only hot. And only hot for a second if it goes viral on TikTok, and I just I, that's why I'm not in love with rap right now. Yeah. Um, do you do you like what is your creative process? Do you intentionally make sure that each song is story is led by storytelling? Nah, nah, nah. nah. So I make sure that um, storytelling is what I do, and I think that I think that the bigger purpose behind the storytelling records is not really what it's not really intentional for me is I think that I'm being guided by some type of higher power that's allowing me to speak through like a channel, like to get through the world. It provides healing for people, right? Whether I'm, I'm talking about uh, suicide or I'm talking about the opioid crisis or, you know, I'm talking about racism or I'm talking about like all, all the storytelling records um, have a concept and that concept is meant to provide some type of healing. And it's like, you know, I've never been suicidal. You know, I've never, you know, been racist, you know, obviously experienced it, but, you know, I've never been um, an addict, you know, but I'm able to write to these records and I'm able to speak in a perspective of someone that has been through those things. And I think that I'm channeling something greater than me that's allowing me to speak on these concepts and speak on these subjects and get the message out to the world and it provides healing for people. So I, I don't even really do that for me. I do that, you know, for other people. But records like Broski, that's super personal to me. Mm -hmm. There was no two sides to it. It was just one side and that was it. Why? Because that's really all it is, is one side and that's it. There's no, there's, there ain't no other side. If you watch that video, I didn't say a word. I just let it just jump out the window, just allowed him to conjure up his own thoughts and you know, hang himself, you know what I'm saying? And then that was it. But that's the thing. A yeah. lot of music nowadays doesn't have that depth to it. So what is your creative process? I'm, what I heard is that you make the, vi you, you come up with the visuals of what the story is going to be first and then you go back. So when I create, yeah, what was, uh, um, I create the visuals in my head first, right? So I, once I have the concept locked down, then I just immediately go into storyboarding in my head, right? The it's visual like, of the video. The visual of the video, I see it, right? It's like I, I, I already can see how the video is gonna start and I already know, you know, and when I'm watching the video in my head, I'm, I'm, I'm writing based off of what I'm seeing. So when the song is already done, once I complete it and it's recorded, I go right into shooting. Wait, so when you say you storyboard, you literally will take it and frame, like lay out the frames of what it's gonna look like and then go back and write to that. In my head. That's crazy. So when did you know you had that? Has that always been your process? No, I knew that. That, that became my process once I learned how to direct music videos. Mm -hmm. and then I knew that the, it was, the world was limitless at that point, right? So um, when I started directing my own music videos, and I had the power to do whatever the f I wanted to do. And I learned it and I studied it and um, even the editing, you know, I do the editing as well. Um, you edit all, all of I your sit videos? sit down, I edit all of the music videos. Do you do the coloring? No, okay. coloring is different, right? I send that to somebody who knows how to color. I don't know how to color. But in your mind, when you're, when you put the frames together and now you've written the songs yeah. and now you've shot it and now you're editing it in there, because coloring is also a very art yeah, piece so of the art form, right? When the, so when you're creating a music video, right, and you have reference pictures, right? So I already know, like, you know, have you, you, you seen Ozark? Yeah. All right, so you watch my two. I fuck with Ozark. So let's say, like, I like the coloring from Ozark, 
I see it now, right? And then it's just like, boom. Well, I got the video in my head, but the whole color in my head is Ozark. So when we go into the actual video, I make sure that the, the you know, the, my coloring team is matching the sets with that, with Ozark. Mm -hmm. So by the time we go and edit, it kind of has that feel to it. Right. Okay, so you, you say you've never been suicidal. So, you you know, a lot of artists, when we see moving through the industri industry and navigating through a lot of the pitfalls or the challenges that lie ahead, uh, they have all these stories of where they felt like, you know, they saw the end of the road for them. You never felt that way along the way in your career? No, never been. I got kids, so like, I can never even think about that because mm -hmm. then once, I'm, once that happens, then who's going to, you know, you can't nobody, there ain't no other man that's going to do that, you know, that I want to do that mm -hmm. at the end of the day. So, absolutely not. Okay, so you said you've not always been the storytelling artist. Not that I, I, I haven't always been the storytelling artist. I haven't always um, created records that way until I started directing my own videos. And then I started doing it backwards. You know, I started you know, picture in the video first. And, you know, now I have complete creative control over the visuals. Now I'm taking that approach. Before then, you know, I would just create the record and then just hope that the director can see the vision and, mm -hmm. and put it together. But I would, I would um, allow the director to have a direction, mm -hmm. you know, but I never really liked the directions. Were you, uh, yeah. have you always been an independent artist? Um, yeah, and then I ended up signing um, to a label. What label? Oh, and then you left. And then I ended up leaving. You signed to Atlantic. Mm -hmm. And then you left. When you were coming up as an artist, and want, was the vision always to get signed? Because a lot of young people that I meet, they're like, I want to get signed to it. Like a record deal is the goal. And let me just, the reason why I say that, because I've been kind of been looking at the research, preparing for today. I think we've just connected in so many ways because there's so many intersections in our life. We're both Leos. Um, you know, I look 35, you are 35. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there, anyway, but the thing is, I feel like I'm also like independent, you know, in many ways, but kind of growing into this thing. I always wanted the national talk show syndicated on a network with the, this, this, this. Um, and I did it on my own and own it on my own and make a lot of money and have the influence or impact. So like I learned along the way to like accept that that goal of being validated by a major network wasn't the thing. It was getting the, the creativity out to the people. What was your journey growing up? Was the goal at first to just get signed because that's what niggas yeah, in the, the hood want? Or? Yeah, like because every all of your, all of my uh, the artists I've ever looked up to were signed, right? Because at that during that time you needed to be signed, right? There was no independence. You you know um, you had Bad Boy, you had. Uh, you had Death Row, you had So So Death, you know, you had No Limit, right? You had Cash Money, Cash Money Records. Can't forget Cash Cash Money Records. You had, and in in those labels, you had all of these artists that were signed, and they were repping that label heavy, right? And it was it almost felt like if you signed to a label, then you get rich, and you know, I grew up poor, so you know the the um, obsession with wanting to be signed, you know, for me was to change the life of, you know, my family at that point. It's, but you remember MTV Cribs? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you see the shows like MTV Cribs and you're like, damn, like, I want to live like that. My mom deserves this. You know, she, you know, we need, we, and if you got the talent, you're like, shit, we could get there, you know? And it's like your obsession with being involved in a label, you start to think that maybe if I get signed and you know, then I can have all these things. So you chase it, you chase it, you chase it. But then what happened was the music industry changed. And even though the music industry changed and certain artists were telling you, yo, you don't need to be signed, I still felt like I wanted to. Like it was like the stamp, right? It was like, I need to feel like I've actually made it. And the only way that that's gonna happen is if I'm validated by signing to a major label. And even though it, it didn't make a lot of sense at the time, I still, signed my life away because I wanted that validation for myself to feel like I did it, I made it, you know? And it wasn't until that I got signed that I actually realized that this wasn't the right situation for me, mm -hmm. you know? At what point after you got signed to Atlantic did you realize this ain't for me? Just, uh, it, was, it was almost immediate. Mm -hmm. 
It was literally almost immediate. Um, and I knew that their vision and my vision didn't line up. You know, the labels is really like a one size fits all. Um, and, you know, they, they pretty much follow the same structure and the same protocol and there's all these different departments and everyone has a chain of command and it's like, I'm so used to, at this time, I'm so used to just doing everything alone and doing everything by myself. It's just like, I'm, I gotta go talk to a project manager. I gotta go talk to this person. About, and let's be clear, yeah. that's not an ego, that's being a Leo. I mean, Leos are just like, right. we just, we kind of just want to do shit. Yeah. So it's just like, you know, I didn't want to follow all these rules. And if I have a date, I want this to drop. No, you can't, because this person's dropping it and you gotta wait this month. Yo, I want to put out, I'm not racist. Nah, you gotta put that out. And it's, it's motherfucking November. Now nah, you got to put that on March because we got this. It's like, this ain't going to work. Yo, I want a first class ticket because I'm about to go shoot this video with Marshall and, you know, I need a first class ticket. Nah, Marshall, you're not Eminem. there. You can't, you, just, you, just, you can't just drop a name. Marshall, Eminem, Eminem. Right. I need a first class ticket because I'm about to go, you know, shoot this video with Marshall, you know, one of the biggest artists in the world. Um, nah, we can't do that, you know, you're not there yet. It was, a, it was just a whole bunch of resilience, you know, and it was just like, damn, bro, I, you know, and then you're funding, you're pretty, you still signed, you know what I'm saying? And you're, and you're still funding things on your own. It's the money is because it's delayed. So it's like, in order to get approvals and in order to do it, it just goes through a chain of command. So by the time that you actually get approvals for the budgets to shoot a music video or to fly, it's about three, four weeks, sometimes five, six months it took, you know, so, I had a, you know, my investor was still investing, even though I was signed, it just didn't make any sense. You know, they didn't see what I'd seen and they didn't really have, um, they didn't really know how to break a Jordan Lucas. They never had a Jordan Lucas over there, you know? So they didn't know how to break a Jordan Lucas. And I don't think it was personal. I don't think that they intentionally was doing anything, but I just feel like there was such an incompatibility factor at, at the, uh, at the label that I realized, and um, I had to get the fuck up out of there. Mm -hmm. And well, before you got out of there, though, you dropped "I'm Not Racist" anyway. Yeah, I dropped "I'm Not Racist" anyway. Can I just ask you a question? Yeah. Because we know you dropped it. What was the thought and conversations you were having internally, both with yourself and with people close to you, about the decision to go against the machine, which yeah. nobody does, yeah. and drop it? So. It was my own frustrations, and um, I think that I knew that I had something groundbreaking, and I knew I had something that was going to change things um, and shake shit up. And I gave them the opportunity to see it, you know, in hopes that they would say, yo, this is it, let's go. And it didn't, you know, it was like, nah, We'll put that shit out in March. You know, it's like, you know, it was just like, nah, these niggas, they don't see it. So you know what? Talk to my manager. I said, we dropping this shit. You know, wait, what? Uh, yeah, we just going to do it. Fuck it. We're going to drop it and we're going to shake shit up. And I guess when we do it and if there's backlash from the label, we'll apologize after. But fuck that. We got to go now. Mm. And we dropped that shit. And we said, fuck it. And we went and we dropped it and just went against the grain. I wanted to get off the label anyway. So it was like, let me, I'm, I'm about to just be a menace up in this motherfucker until they let me go. So what was the reaction? Like immediately every, the world started talking about it. It went viral, right? Yeah, I went to, I took, I drive, as soon as we push upload on the shit, I took a nap. That's what I heard. And I woke up and the shit was on my mom, woke me up. Like, yo, you want the front page of my, you want the, TV. <laughs> but isn't that like yeah. the gas labels want for an artist that's breaking? Like what I you do. want the world to, to you right. want it to just blow up and then you just start shaping it into like yeah. the direction you want the body of the work to go in? Yeah, you would think that, you know, they would they would, you know, they would want you to do shit like this so that they can see, you know, and and really believe, you know, and then be like, you know what, let me pour the gas on that motherfucker and just we can go crazy. But that's not the reaction. The reaction was, you know, resilience. The reaction was like, hey, little nigga, like you, you down here, we got motherfucking Ed Sheeran, we got, you know, Cardi B, we got all the biggest artists in the world, you little nigga, you know, they, they were little nigga in me, you know what I'm saying? And it was like, 
it just I just knew that it wasn't the right situation. I had to get the fuck up out of there. And that was the best decision I ever made in my life. You know, and I've seen once I got the fuck, I was broke the whole time I was on the label. You know, it's like you're not making money. I didn't know that that was going to happen. You know, did what I'm you saying? think getting signed, the money's just going to start pouring in? That's it. Mm-hmm. I thought we were good. I made it. I told my mom to quit a job. Yeah, I had she a, didn't quit, though. She quit a job. What? The first thing I I've, I've always been obsessed with wanting my, to take care of my moms. You so you thought saying? by signing, I made it for her. I made it. Which she's good. My mom, <clears throat> my mom smoked cigarettes her whole life. She tried to quit, couldn't quit. And she made a deal with me that, you know, I told her if I got signed, you got to quit. She said, if you sign, I'll quit. She, not, she never smoked another cigarette again mm. to this day. Signed. Um, and I got a hundred thousand dollar advance. I'm thinking more money's gonna come in. And after everybody got paid out, I got stuck with like sixty. But even then, that's the most money I've ever seen in my life. And sixty can go real fast, though. Sixty, right? But I, I don't know that. Again, yeah. I'm, I never had sixty. Yeah, yeah. You feel me? Boom, my fucking half of that shit went to my mama. Thirty. Thirty thousand, yo ma, quit your job. We good now. <laughs> yo, we made it. We made it. Real shit. Yeah, we made it. This is what I'm thinking. Like, yeah, nigga, you ain't got work again. <laughs> like, mom's gonna left her pen, every pension. Hey, yo, off. real she shit. A, she was a nurse at the time. She's a she was a like a nurse's aide, working in a nursing home. Nursing yeah. home. She oh, she didn't have she. But mom told everybody, I'm out. We made it. I'm out. We made it. She got her thirty bands. You know, I got her a whip, um, and I was paying the rent. So with my bread, I'm paying the rent. But then. And then I went on the internet and I'm like, yeah, like I told my mom to quit her job. Like I was happy about right, that right, shit. Right. That's like, but it was some, it took all your credit. Right. You did do what you wanted to do and that right. was take care of your mom. Just take care of mom. So right. you celebrated so, that. Celebrated that. But then the label calls me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was a short lived hey, celebration. Nigga, the label, listen, the label calls me and they're like, yo, why'd you do that? Like the a and called me. Yo, why the fuck you do that? I said, what you mean? He was legit mad at me. Mm. He was pissed. I couldn't understand why the fuck you, why are you mad, nigga, that I'm retired my mom's and I'm happy about that shit. Nah, bro, you don't understand, bro. Like, that you, you shouldn't have did that. And I got into it with that nigga and shit, whatever, but I didn't like how he was, I felt like, nigga, you should be happy, nigga, that, but I didn't understand, you know what I'm saying? I didn't understand this. What, sh- what didn't you understand? The sham, bro. Mm-hmm. I call it the sham. What is that? The sham. <laughs> the, sh- the sham is like the bullshit. It's like, you know what I'm saying? It's like a, a, a you know, a facade. There's a big facade there. And it's like, you, you know, you, you think something is what it is. You know, the sham is when you walk into the label you know, and they sit at the table and they tell you how great you are and how amazing and how they love this and they love that and you're just signed to us and, you know, this is the best decision you're gonna make and you'll have access to all these things and you got this, they got the champagne out and they popping bottles with you and they just like, you feel like, oh shit, like this is it. It's all a part of the And champ. while that's happening, don't look at the joiner Lucas you're looking at right now with yeah. the diamonds and teeth. This is somebody who's don't have no money. Bro. Desperately wants to help mom. Nothing. Finally arrived at the table that the Lord prepared for them to get all their dreams. So they're really preying on that, yeah. that emptiness and that feeling that I, I need this. The sham. It's yeah. all a part of the sham. You know, you go and then they got your music playing. You walk in, your music is playing. You're thinking like, oh shit, these, they, they really love me over here, you know? And it's like, you don't realize that this is part of a fucking sham, bro. You you probably the fourth, fifth nigga that done came in here today and it's changed the music out, you know what I'm saying? And they got some more champagne and doing this with everybody, bro. You know what I'm saying? And they was mad at me because they they knew that, they knew what I didn't know, which was like, nigga, you're not about to see another fucking dollar for another couple years. So what his frustration was or anger was that you fell for the sham yeah, well, and that you promoted the sham yeah. and didn't know that you had bought into it wasn't it wasn't the frustration wasn't you fell for the sham because he was in on the sham it was damn nigga you i didn't know you was about to you was about to jump out there now and do all this because now when you realize that this was a sham you probably going you 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 your mama's going to have to go back to work wow right 
But how could he be mad when he's a part of the problem? Exactly. So, okay, so now... So the money starts to wind down, right? And then I had to do some street shit in order to fucking keep the money going. I have a son, you know what I'm saying, just born. And I got into a real fucked up situation to where I, nigga, if I didn't do some street shit, nigga, I was going to have to go to work. Mm -hmm. I was going to have to go to McDonald's. Go motherfucking Walmart or some shit, which probably wasn't gonna happen. I was gonna have to do some other shit, but I had to sustain shit long enough to where I could actually, you know, break, you know, and that and that took a long time. So one of the intersections yeah. between me and Joiner that happened, yeah. some of you that have been following me, you know, uh, we connected on the conflict uh, that involved Karen Sybil. She was an intersection between both of our careers in different ways at the rise of Hollywood Unlocked. She was very instrumental in glorifying the fact that she uh, had an underage uh, person hack my account. And as you all know, Hollywood Unlocked went down at 1.2 million followers years ago. I went on The Breakfast Club and talked about it. You can go check it out. But I had heard about Joyner Lucas uh, here and there in Charlemagne and said, oh, this dope-ass artist, Charla uh, Joyner Lucas. But I heard of Joyner Lucas directly when you went live and you put Karen Civil on blast for... Uh, uh, Robin, you take your money from you. Um, and you didn't do it in the way that Jason Lee would have done it. Mm -hmm. You did it in the way Joyner Lucas storytelling and art mm -hmm. does it. You didn't attack. You just laid it out that at the lowest moment where you needed somebody to help you market your records, you had paid her, I think, $60,000. 60 bands. Was that around this time? This was um, before. This was even before that. Yeah, so this was before. This was This was right when baby moms was pregnant. And, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get to the point to where I can get to the label. You know, because at the point is like you still reaching for the label thinking that once you sign, everything is good. So I'm trying to get there. The 60 bands was my last ditch effort. You know, this was my investor. You know, my investor was invested in me. So this is his money, but it's really my money because once this motherfucker say that's it, that's it, and then I gotta pay this shit back. You feel me? So, you know, he was all set after this. Like, nigga, this is it. Like, once we get his bread to Karen and she don't make shit happen, and that's that's it, bro. Like, so my life was about to be over. And this nigga's gonna stop spending money. That's my investor. I'm fucked, right? So it's like, I'm advocating for this nigga. Like, like, yo, this is this, she's the one. She she worked with Nip, she's doing her thing, yada, yada, yada. Are you sure? I'm sure. All right, nigga. I'm not paying the 60 bands and then all of a sudden the shit and then nothing happens from it and I just lost another fucking... We, at this point, we already motherfucking 500,000 deep, you know, in in my career. You know what I'm saying? He 500,000 deep and invested in me. So he was he was already like to the point where I'm about to be tapped the fuck out if this if this shit don't work. So when she, when she did that, you know what I'm saying? I felt like my whole, you know what I'm saying? Like, the, my, that's, like that shit fucked me up. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. how were you introduced? To, you're introduced to her through a friend. I was introduced uh, to Sky Zoo. And then when you met her, and did she tell you, I'm going to do these very specific things and this is what it's going to cost? Or did she say, yeah. you give me the 60 bands, I can't promise you nothing. She promised me a whole bunch of things. I still got an email of exactly all of the things she said that she was going to do every last thing that she outlined that she was gonna do. And then once she ended up getting the bread, she stopped answering the calls. She, one time she tried to turn up on me because I called her too many times. <laughs> I didn't get a reaction. I couldn't get, get a hold of her, you know what I'm saying? And now I'm worried, like, what the fuck, you know? I called her and she answered the phone, like, nigga, I'm on vacation. Call and stop blowing up my phone. I'm on vacation right now. While the deliverables aren't delivering? While the deliverables weren't delivering. Real shit. Like, I'm disturbing her fucking day. I'm calling. She she coming at me like I'm disturbing her day. But nigga, I'm on a beach with my, <laughs> with my legs kicked up. And you calling me about your bread? <laughs> like, nigga, it was disrespectful. You feel me? So, you know, I was I was just like, yeah. After After all of this happens, I gave up. I gave up. I called my investor and I told him, I said, bro, I'm You gave good. up on music? I gave up. Like, I was just like, bro, like, 
Cause I felt bad. Cause it's like, nigga, he just, I just watched this man spend his, he just spent 60 and say, yo, this is it. I'm not going. So it was just like, that's it. Right. I just felt defeated. Like, yo, this like this fuckers industry. Like niggas is robbing us and shit. Like we didn't know what we were doing. I had a nigga that was spending money and we were trying to break into the game and we was trying to hire people as consultants to help us break, you know, whatever. And um, after that whole shit happened, which wasn't the first time that we got robbed in some way, shape or form, you know what I'm saying? And I just felt defeated that I just was like, yo, fuck this shit, bro. I give up, like, you know, but because my investor is a real nigga, he would have let me give up. And he was like, you know what? Fuck this shit, bro. We're gonna figure this shit out. Don't worry about it. You know what I mean? We're gonna get you to where you need to go. And he kept going. So when you look back over that experience, what was the lesson that you took away from it? Besides don't give Karen Silver no money, but like what what was it that, cause you know, we try to find the Stop lessons. hiring consultants. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like, but I think, I really honestly think what happened was she kind of had the mentality and the way she carried herself with, even the way she, she spoke to me, it was like, you could tell that she really didn't actually think that I was gonna get on. Mm -hmm. It was a cat, it was a money grab. You know what I'm saying? It was like, she never thought that I would get to the point to where I would have a platform to even speak to where people would listen and it would come back to her. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like if, you know, when I, when, I, when I go to try to take, if I go to try to kill you, you know what I'm saying? Because you, there's something that happened and I wanna, and you know some shit and I gotta take you out. Like me? Yeah, like you do. You, I gotta take you out. I gotta kill you because you spoke or did some shit you wasn't supposed to do. So now I gotta take you out. So I go, I pop eight, ten shots in you, but you survive. I wasn't expecting you to survive, but you survive. And not only and did if you, I do, I'm telling. And I'm you telling, you right and then I get put away, right? Yes. But I wasn't expect, so I didn't yes. can do the job. I didn't think you were gonna make it. So you I, thought her taking the money, she thought taking the money was going to kill you. You were just defeated and going it. away and she took that. Cause, she, Cause I was vulnerable to tell her like, yo, this nigga's not, not gonna spend no more. After and this. she knew you were vulnerable. She knew I was vulnerable. And she, did she know you had a baby on the way? She knew I had a baby on the way, mm. right? And it was like, so the analogy is I'm going to kill your ass cause you, you know some shit and it's like, I gotta take you out but I didn't do the job. I thought I did, you survived the shit, and then now you in court telling on me and it's all over, right? And it's like, I should have shot you in the head. Mm. Well, that's why she thought by having my page deleted, it would kill me too. She didn't know right. we had two Leos <laughs> that weren't even connected, because I didn't know you at the time. Yeah. You didn't know me, right? Nah, the first time I heard, um, first time was on that call. The whole clubhouse yeah, moment. Yeah. So what made, because you, you, Joyner was the catalyst to expose Karen Civil. He posted something on his Instagram in a very heartfelt way that I think, and the reason why I bring it up today isn't really to shit on Karen because I think she's already had her karma as a result of all this. But I think there's so many artists out there who aspire to be a Joyner Lucas, who aspire to want to get into the industry, who don't know the pitfalls of how labels work, how these consultants would work. Because I consult, but I actually do, do the work. Um, but when you, what, what made you decide, I'm going to go ahead and air this out on social media? When I aired it out on social media the first time, she sent me, she hit, she hit my, my manager or my business partner, somebody up and said to take that down. And she gave me an apology. She sent what she wanted me to say for the apology. She sent you an apology she said, when she wanted to apologize to her? Yeah. So she was like, awesome. Like, listen, either you, I'm going to sue you. Hold on, Joyce. Slow down. Stop. Hold on. Slow down. <laughs> I think she I put, might still no, have no, that. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. So you put, yeah. we'll just say put on blast, but you put everybody on notice. And then you got a, your people got a text of, here's the pre-printed yeah. apology on yeah. how he can apologize yeah, to yeah, me yeah, yeah, yeah. for telling people how I robbed yeah, him. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm it was sure it, it was it was like um, it was some shit where it was like oh, um, I was wrong about what I said. Um, it was it was <laughs> it was some shit like how um, I was wrong about what I said. Um, you know, I, I I should never disrespect uh, her again. Like it was some wild shit. Yeah, I read this shit. I was like, yo, this nigga's crazy. Yeah, I said this nigga's wild. She was like, it was like, don't ever, um, I'm, I apologize for speaking on such a mogul, 
like this. <laughs> you know I mean? Wait, 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 wait. Mobile, what she talking about? You? She's talking about herself. She was talking about like, yo, the letter read some wild shit. I'm trying, I gotta find it. Okay, wait. So yeah. then you get it and then what happens? You, did that, is that when you did the yeah. second post? No, no. Well, where I started going crazy. You know, I, just, I, 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 um, when she sent that, I, I couldn't stop laughing because it was like, that's, it's fucking hilarious, right? And then I basically told, um, I told my my manager to respond to her. And I'm not gonna tell you what tell her what I said, but it was because it was too like yo know, like like awesome suck my dick shit. Yeah, like, yeah. but <laughs> but it was worse than that, right? But I I'm like yo tell her this, you know what I'm saying? And then and then I just went and then I and then I got more once I got once I started getting more clout because my goal is like yo once I just start once I get on 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 then I'm going in, you know what I'm saying? And then that's that's what happened. Okay, so then you so join her post, and then at that time, uh, uh, she was into with Jesse Wu, who then Jesse Wu posted, yeah. and then I had already had my moment, but I was in Miami and started getting calls on the side that it yeah. was going down on Clubhouse, yeah. and you joined Clubhouse, right? I joined the Clubhouse. Yeah. Then I joined Clubhouse, and that was our Clubhouse connection. But when when that happened, did, what did you feel? Did you feel validation? Did you feel a sense of karma? Did you feel like you had been uh, made whole? What did you feel? I felt. Um, well, when I first tweeted what I tweeted, Cameron actually retweeted it and because, said his shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was like, oh, nigga, she got me for this, and she did this, da da yeah, yeah, right. And so when when we got on Clubhouse, it was the I'm facing somebody that shot me and thought I wasn't gonna survive. You feel me? And it's just like now I'm able to look at that like a word, like you feel me? You didn't think I was gonna be here. So it was like more. It was, it was. Validation when everybody else got on the clubhouse and was like, "Nigga, you did this, you did that, yada yada yada." It made me feel like, like, word, like I'm not the only nigga that mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying that this shit happened to. Mm. Yeah, but I feel yeah. like you still handled it with grace. I mean, you, you, you. It was definitely accountability, but you didn't lose it because I don't want to disrespect women, bro. Yeah. I don't want to like be a nigga to go out there and just like start, you know, talking crazy and like shitting her publicly because that shit never goes away. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And in a year or two from now, you're gonna be able to see or hear that, and people ain't gonna know the context of it. And then it's just, I'm gonna look like a disrespectful ass nigga. You know what I'm saying? And I, I don't want that to be my image. You know what I'm saying? So that's yeah. happening at that time. Then you go on to the label and you get defeated again. I believe I. Meaning, you retire mom, you get the deal, you yeah. put out I'm not racist, yeah. and now you and the label separate. Me and the label didn't just separate that fast. I think. Um, I ended up, I ended up saving all the emails that I had with them just so that I had transcripts of them not doing what they were supposed to do, mm -hmm. and I knew that I needed that so that when I went back and I wanted out, I have like here are the line items of things that you guys said that you were gonna do, and here's what you didn't do. So I I basically made it to where like, um, you know, you kind of. You broke the contract type of shit. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And then they were like, nah, give us another chance. Let's do this. Nah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, all right. Then they gave me another bag to stay. While and, and, and that agreement was they gave me a bag for me to shut up and chill. And it was like, all right, cool. But you have one last time to make this shit right. So I gave them I love. The whole time I wasn't trying to drop an album on Atlantic because I knew that once I did that, I'm really locked in for six albums. So I just kept giving singles. So because I gave, that, was, that was your agreement? Well, no, the agreement was I had to do six albums. You know what I'm saying? It was a, that was your agreement from the beginning? Six albums, one million dollars. Yeah, it was a real fuck. It was a what? The 360, it was a fucked up deal. What? It was like a... It but was, did you think that that was like that six album, one million dollar deal was that pathway to fortune? Well, yeah, because I thought that after the first album, or uh, you know, as I'm creating, I didn't realize that there, we wasn't, I wasn't gonna really be making any money. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, the sham, bro. They talk, yeah. you know, you make this, you do the hit, and then you know, you get this back. But when you break down the points and the percentages of what you're getting, you know, you're 16% after you recoup, and then, you and you're accumulating debt along the way. Along the way. So to put it like this, the record labels is like the worst loan that you could ever get it's really a loan right it's like they're giving you vag and then you know whatever whatever then they have the resources but i didn't really see the resource part you know what i'm saying so really all it was was a loan but it's the worst loan in history right imagine going to the bank and you borrow uh a million dollars 
and you got to pay them back $8 million before you can even receive any bread. Pitch, pitch that. That's insane. You're literally right. working to pay debt. 100%. And then they keep you in debt by throwing you more money that's going to keep you, you know, so when you're enslaved when to them. 100%. So once you're starving again and you're like, yo, I need bread, they'll throw you in a bag, shut the fuck up, take this bag, and then now you're that 500000 now you got to pay them back about four well, million. And did they own the masters too? <laughs> and they own the masters. You're not getting your masters back. So it's so is 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 that whole experience what led you to just saying fuck that? I just need to own my own shit. It's a sham. Yeah, and I think that I think that I needed to experience that so that way I knew how to run my own shit. Once I got off and I can become independent, I knew exactly what to do, what not to do, how to move, you know, how not to move. But I needed to experience that shit so that I can, you know, when I do my own shit, I knew exactly what to do. And then once I got out, I got rich. Mm. Well, and L doesn't just stand for Leo, it stands for lessons. The mm. whole journey is like this was the this was like the uh ground zero for building your own foundation. 100%. Right. But now, so do you do you distribute your own con your own music through your own label? No. Well, so we go through Orchard. Okay. So I have a um a partnership with Orchard, um, and we distribute through Orchard. And you built this on your own? Yeah. So did you go back and become a scientist on how the industry works? hundred percent. So okay. once I learned how the industry worked, and you know, I became knowledgeable on that, you know, I started, you know, doing my own shit, like with Tully, you know what I mean? Like, um, co-founder of Tully, started that up. Um, Tell people about the app, you own it. Tully um, is a pre-production tool for artists. Um, so that they can store their music in there, they can record, they can write, um, they can, you know, it's like a, a function in there that you could, you know, invite your managers in there. You got split sheets and shit in there. You know, uh, directors have Final Cut, Adobe Premiere, um, and uh, photographers, Photoshop. Y'all got Photoshop, right? Then you got Microsoft Word for mm -hmm. people, right? Microsoft Excel and all that shit for people that work mm -hmm. sit in the office. Um, and then there's nothing for artists to have, you know? So I wanted to create a pre-production tool for artists to have. And once I got Tully off the ground, I raised about 9 million from Sony, built a relationship with Sony. Orchard is underneath Sony. They found out that, you know what I'm saying? I was now not a part of a label. They came in there and, you know, we formed a partnership, and we've been working ever since. And it's, it's amazing. It's an amazing relationship. And now, that house that you want to give your mom, because I, do you show your house at all online? Not, not really, but, you know, sometimes you, I do. Joyner has an Olympic-sized swimming pool inside the house. <laughs> so now that you've been able to go through the hell with the scamming consultant and the label that wanted to own you and keep their thumb on you and now come on the other side of it, make all the money, be a tech entrepreneur through Tully, which I didn't know, and have the house that you always wanted and your mom. But now my, I mom understand. Not, my mom, the house first before I got my But now I understand too. why when you call me, you're riding around with moms and like you're always focused on making her happy. I get it now. Yeah. So now that you're on the other side of it all, what does it feel like? I mean, for one, it feels it, it feels um, great to know that I... I changed um, everything, you know, for the family that I do have um, around. And, you know, we no longer have to live in poverty. And, you know, everyone got their own cribs, you know what I'm saying? Caught mom's house before I got mine. Um, sister's good. Um, my kids are great. You know, it's like, a, it's, it's, it's good to know that we're, nobody's in survival mode. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Everyone's good. When you hear your name listed among everybody mm -hmm. else's, within the culture, people know where you stand, but commercially, you may not be where you want to be. Is that because the engine of the label's not behind you? Because I think they're really good at putting a lot of money to put brands all over buildings, but mm -hmm. then that just is increasing ownership of their property, mm -hmm. right? Um, That's all it is. Yeah. They're increasing the ownership of their Is property. that accurate to say? A million percent. So. Is it your first question? Was is well because when I hear you, when I hear your name spoken or like Rhapsody, yeah, I don't think there's any 
doper artists yeah. doing what you all do. Mm -hmm. But you'll hear about other rappers' names on the radio more right. or maybe out, you know, is it really your honesty? It really is is God's timing, man. Mm -hmm. You look at somebody like Nipsey Hustle. Nipsey had twenty albums and mixtapes, like Right, he's been in the game for so long and he's been grinding for so long, right out here in the streets mm -hmm, of, of mm -hmm. uh, LA. And it took him all this time and all these years to finally, you know, get the Jay-Z stamp, you know what I'm saying? The Rock Nation, bro, not, you know, you couldn't not see it. He got the Puma, he had the Puma deal, you know, they were going strong with him. And it was like, it took him that, amount of time to get, and Jelly Roll, that's another perfect mm -hmm. example. It's somebody that was in the game, you know, and he finally just really broke as an artist, you know? So it's like, for me, I feel like it's all God's timing. And I think that I'm starting to become more and more visible every day. And um, I'm way more visible now than I've ever been. Oh no, you know now for sure. For sure, yeah. And that's all, but that's all- Independent. Um, independent. All independent. So is the grind a lot harder? Yeah, it's a it's a, definitely a lot harder, but this is the reason why I felt it was necessary for me to even be signed. Because once I got in the building and I seen how this shit works, and I got to see what they're doing, it was it's easy to be like, I bet. Once I got out, and it was like, all right, so this is how we need to do it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So when you're yeah. independent, you own your masters, you make all the money from the tour. You basically I make more money than artists that are on the label. That's a fact. And then do you then turn around it? Because I make a lot of money independent in media and I sure. turn around and flip it all back into my business. Flip it back into the business. Okay. You know what I mean? You make you, you know, if, if you, you own 100% of your shit, so all the money that's coming in, put it like this, right? If 200, 300,000 records are sold, this is what the numbers are doing now, right? We'll say, let's say Future and Metro, right? They just dropped. So let's say in the first week, you know, their numbers are 250, right? 250,000, you know, you times that by 10. If the album costs 10, I don't know if it's 20 or 10, right? So it was 250,000 times 10 is what, 2.5 million, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Out of that 2.5 million, they're not seeing shit because they got to recoup. Like all that money got to go back to the label and then it got to be split between two niggas Right, and they're getting probably a percentage of that, and it's like when it's all said and done, they would they would have to sell. They would have to sell over a million copies, and they would have to be in the green before they start making a percentage, you know, a percentage of what those sales are doing, and that percentage is probably like like sixteen percent. So why would anybody even want a label? Would so, it just be famous? I don't know. I, I guess I have no idea. But let's say Joyner drops an album. And let's say if I sold 50,000 copies, but I'm receiving 100% of 50,000, what's that? What, um, at $10, 500,000? Yeah, let's say at $10, 500,000. That 500,000 goes straight to me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Plus the streaming, plus, plus the, the streaming, touring. Plus the touring, and plus that, that, that. But let, that's just first week, right? Let's just, let's say if it just, if. Cause yeah, then if somebody wants to put in a Netflix show licensing, then they want to put it here. They would. Hundred percent, but that's just first week we're talking, right? Because it's it's gonna continue to move. It's gonna get popular. It's gonna keep growing. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I would have made I would have made out and made more money than somebody that's actually on the label. That's just that's just how mm -hmm. that's just what it is. All know? right, so you just dropped the album. Not now, I'm busy. Mm -hmm. um, how did you? come up with that title not now I'm busy is a testament of where my life was and where where it is like you know when you are doing so many especially as an independent artist where you know you you're, you're pretty much doing everything alone right mm -hmm. with the help of I have a team a small team right um, and and you're trying to balance a lot of different things at the same time you're trying to balance fatherhood you know you're trying to balance um, recording and shooting videos, your time to your family. All the girls. Girl, you know, shit like that. Like you balancing everything, mm -hmm. you know? So it's a lot to it's a lot to manage, it's a lot to balance. And it and you start to become so busy that you just like even the important things like, you know, you 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 start to not have time for it. And it and 
So that's that meaning. But then also it's about um, on the album, I talked about how I have to, I had to kill off, you know, the old version of myself to become the new version of myself, you know, and I was too busy to, to, to really take a second to realize that I had to do that. You know what I mean? Wait, so let me pause. Let me put the album cover up right here. This is the cover yeah. of the new album, just yeah. so you can see it. I'm running for city council back home. Everybody knows that. I'm running to talk about how to end crime. Yeah. Then a friend of mine drops an album with the cover drenched in blood. <laughs> I didn't know the backstory. So I posted it because that's what friends do. You're going to support your friend. But then I had to go back and, and look at the meaning behind it all because you got blood, the whole album, your face yeah, is covered in blood. Yeah, you called me, he was like, nigga, why the fuck you... Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, I mean, I didn't know if it was a drive-by. It looked like a scene from <laughs> Boys in the Hood. I didn't know what happened. Ricky was probably running the wrong nah, way. Nah, man, it was, a, it was a deeper meaning than that. But, so Ooh. when you were creating the album, did you know, like, that was the theme for the, the body of work you were creating, and then that is how you wanted to tell the story visually? Yes. That's how I wanted to tell the story visually, mm -hmm. right? I wanted to make it more interesting than just that, you know? And, you know, as I'm on my journey and I'm having revelations and I'm starting to really understand what things are and what they ain't, mm -hmm. um, you know, I had to really conceptualize it in a way that was gonna, you know, be true to me. And, that, and, and that's what you get from the cover. So I recently uh, met jo Jelly Roll at the Grammys on the red carpet. Um, you all have the song on the album, uh, Best For Me. I've probably played it a thousand times because that's what I do. I play a song. Once I get a song, you play it out. that song is going to be played out. Yeah. I think I think Best To Me, uh, that song and Texas Hold'em. Oh, with Beyonce? Yeah, just going back. You know, cause, say Texas. But, 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 but what I love <laughs> about this song up. with you and Jelly Rose, I yeah. mean, I came to discover him, uh, watching him testify in front of Congress about the opioid crisis and then talking to him on the, mm -hmm. on the red carpet at the Grammys learning more about his own personal challenges and struggles mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and looking at how he's using music to tell stories that matter the same as you are. How did you two connect and how did that come together? So when I created the Best of Me record, um, I've always been a fan of Jelly Roll and I knew that he was the, I knew that he was the guy that made the most sense, you know, on the song. And I reached out to him and he heard it. He said, yo, I got goosebumps, bro. This one's gonna go, I wanna be involved. You know, he was, he's a fan of mine, so he was excited that I hit him up and, you know, we built a really good friendship and he's a he's an amazing, amazing person, bro. Mm -hmm. And so and now you all, it seems like you guys have developed a friendship. 100%. How do you decide, how do you know when somebody's going to become a friend? Because like, I ain't going to lie, when I reached out to you to do the yeah. whole Tupac thing, I didn't think we'd become friends because yeah. I don't be friends with rappers. Y'all be into other shit. I don't do what rappers do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, y'all out trying to get all the girls. You know, I'm out, you know, mm -hmm. you know what I did. Pause. Um, so, like, how do you know? This dude has paused me more than I paused anybody. I think. I haven't paused one time on this interview. Not yet. No, you, I think you did. No, I didn't. No, I think you did. No, I didn't. Yeah, or maybe it was right before. I didn't pause at all. Well, I've been trying. This interview, I stayed away from the pausing. Well, they're coming. Pause. Um, how do you know when you meet somebody and you know, you know what? I fuck with this dude. Um, the same, the same way that you meet anybody and be like, I fuck with this nigga. It really just depends on like the personality. Like, I didn't know that I was. Gonna, I didn't know what his personality was gonna be like. But when I first talked to him, I'm like, yo, he's a he's a dope fucking guy, right? Mm -hmm. He's just a cool dude. He got like a a real dope like aura about him that's just um just great energy you know what i mean and I, i'm attracted to good energy mm -hmm. and it's like if somebody has good energy you know then it's like i want to be around that person because i love good energy mm -hmm. um and he has really great energy so did you make that song a single or no what best for me yeah that's just the one that just happened. That's the be, single. That's okay, that's what's, okay, because yeah. I, I I know it had the star next mm -hmm. to it. That's the only way I know what songs are singles. Yeah. When I look on iTunes, if it has a star next to it, but when, when, I, when I listen to the album, that song stuck out of me. Another song with Twista, which I haven't heard Twista in years, but you know, Twista raps so fast, you just da da and you don't really listen. Yeah. I actually listen to the words, and he was telling stories in the song, and telling a story about how uh, he had went back and got a regular job which, you know, you talked earlier about thinking like you'd have to go back to work at McDonald's. Mm -hmm. Motherfuckers get money and get fame. They ain't trying to go back and be in no drive through window or Facts. nowhere where somebody pulls up and can embarrass them. Because we've seen celebrities get filmed and put on 
social media member of the guy from uh, the Cosby show where they yeah. filmed him at his job. So yeah, so what was that experience like working with Twista and in having him tell his story, did you help him get to a place of being comfortable with so, Twista? Yeah, because Twista, I've always had a real respect for Twista because he's one of the, uh, that song that he mentioned on there, Pope Pimp, that song was like one of the first fast songs I ever heard right in my life. I haven't heard anybody rap fast, but I was young and, you know, Twista definitely like, you know, somebody that I've, I've you know, he's like the, he's the man at that shit. Like, that's what he does, right? And um, I had a, uh, got invited out to um, this show that Jelly Roll was doing. He invited me out. And Twista was there. He stopped me backstage and was like, yo, bro, can I get a picture? I'm a fan, yada, yada, yada. And I got his number and we connected. And when I did this record with Logic, I felt like I needed another verse on there. And it was just like, we were rapping fast. And I'm like, yo, Twista would go crazy on this. And then I, I uh, sent it to, to Twista. His verse originally was very different on there. It was like he was trying to bar up with us and, you know, be on some metaphorical, you know, technological bars. And it just wasn't really, he wasn't telling his story and I wanted him to tell his story. So although the verse was dope, I just didn't feel like it fit this song. So I had asked him if he could redo his verse. Um, so when you call him and you tell him that about the vision and what you want to see him do creatively, because he actually, I mean, was very vulnerable in, in his verse on the song. He was mad vulnerable. Yeah. And, and um, when I told him that, he was like, all right, man. He was like, damn. He was like, all right, I got you. And a couple of days later, he hit me up. He was like, yo, I ain't going to lie. I'm mad at you, bro. I was like, what? Why are you mad at me? He was like, nobody's ever asked me to change my verse. And not only that, but you made me dig deep and you made me touch on some shit that I, I, I didn't want to talk about because going to that place makes me emotional. So the whole time I'm writing my verse, I'm emotional. I'm crying and shit while writing this verse. And it's like, you brought me there, right? And it's like, so I'm mad at you for that. but. And he played it for me. And I was like, this is what the fuck I've been waiting for. This is what I want. And I don't think people have ever gotten that side of Twister before. Where do you get the courage to do that, though? Because you ask Eminem to do that, too. And right. like, the people ain't calling up. You ain't calling Beyonce and asking her to change no lyric. I think <laughs> it was very tough for me to do that with Marshall, to be honest with you. Because, and, and the thing is, it's like, his verse was perfect up until like the end of it. You know what I mean? And I just felt like that a lot of that was due to him not wanting direction from me. Mm -hmm. When I sent him the record and the concept, I'm like, yo, here, here's the con. He was like, don't tell me the concept. Let me do what I do. I say, yo, but bro, this is specific. Cause I already got the video in my head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Right. And, the, and, and what I was saying on the song wasn't in the video. I would have to show you the video we have to show people. And it's like, I need you to play this specific character. Mm -hmm. But he didn't want to hear it. This is Marshall. Yeah, this is Marshall. Yeah. He didn't want to hear it. He kept telling me, I don't want to hear it. I'm like, all right. But can I? He's like, D I don't want to hear it. I said, all right. So he sends his verse back. And he went in a different direction, right? And I'm like, because I'm married to this idea of the video in my head. I'm like, he has to change this shit because, right. of, you know what I'm saying? I have a whole nother direction to go in. And he, he, I told him, I said, bro, this is why I wanted you to hear the direction. Cause you know, he was like, all right. And he just changed the ending. That, that was really, it, it was the ending for me. That but it's it, the fact that you had the, uh, the courage. Oh yeah, because bro, like, I mean, I, I know another word I want to yeah. but like the audacity you know, to tell yeah, Eminem yeah, yeah. to change his, his I felt, song. I felt weird. I felt weird about that. To be honest with you, it was like I I felt like, and I think when I said it to him, I was like, "Yo, I I don't know how to say this because I don't want to sound like disrespectful or whatever." But it's like I just I felt like the direction of where you went with the verse was a little bit different than what I was expecting, and I I just. Can, is there any way the ending, can we change the ending? 
You know what I mean? And um, yeah, that was tough to do. But but I mean, I think it's my a, hero, bro. I think like it says kid. a lot to you as an artist, yeah. though, for him yeah. to respect you enough to make the change. Yeah, this is this is again, this is my hero, bro. So, is, so basically, this, yeah. asking Marshall, yeah. aka Eminem, to change his verse. Um, I guess what what is the same arena? Um, Marshall ran so t- uh, Twister could walk. Uh, wait. Marshall walked so Twister could run. run. So yeah. it made it easier to call Twist and say, yo, if Marshall can do it, yeah, 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 do yeah, it yeah, too. yeah, 100%. It's a lot easier. But it was, and that was a difficult conversation I have with Marshall. I'm being honest with you. I, I honestly was like, damn, I hope he doesn't like hate me after this or, mm-hmm. you know, feel no type of way. Like, because, you know, I don't know how I would feel if somebody, at, but again, I, I ensured him, like, yo, there's nothing wrong with the verse, it's fire. It's not about, you know, it's, it's just like if in the video, I had you playing the dad, but in the song you wrote it from you're playing a friend. Mm-hmm. Now you're changing the concept of the video, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's kind of and it's and that's all it was. It was he, like, did he understand your creative process? He understood it, creative. right? He understood it, um, but it wasn't that I was told him to change the verse because it was whack, yeah, or no shit like that. It was like it was just the you went friend. I was thinking dad and, and you wrote it from a friend perspective and not a parent perspective and it's just kind of, it's, it's fucking up the, the video in my mind now and now I have to try to figure out something else. And I was married to the idea that I had, you know what I mean? That's all it really was. But yeah. he's one of the best storytellers and visual storytellers, Ever. so he gets it. Ever, bro. Yeah. And it's just like, how the fuck can I tell this man who is the best? to change anything yeah. like like who the fuck am i to say that right that it made me feel weird to even have to even to do that you know what i mean but yeah. okay so yeah. another famous person you're friends with is will smith now i think i called you and told you that the word on the street that i heard is that you and will smith did a song either did a song or did an album that never came out that's what i heard hollywood unlocked me in the streets so me and will smith um have written tons of shit together. We have tons of songs together. But Will just has to be in the right place mentally to want to drop some of the shit that we drop um, because it's very different side of Will. He's protecting his friend. I'm going to ask the question because I have to ask the question. I'm a Hollywood Unlock. He didn't answer it when I asked him before because he's really good at maneuvering around things. But since you're here, I heard you had a song Will Smith you guys had shot everything, you were ready to go, and then it didn't come out. Well, we never shot anything. Okay, so then that was wrong. Yeah, that was wrong. We never shot We never shot anything. I think um, Will is a climate type of guy, right? And it, the record is probably gonna come out, mm-hmm. right? At the right time, right? But he's a climate guy. He's shooting movies, he's doing all this stuff. So he doesn't want something to come out while he's doing something else and then it overlaps what he's doing and it's just like it has to make sense to him and it has to be timing right mm-hmm. and there's been times that he thought was the right time and there's been time where he hit me up and was like yo i'm ready to go and i'm like not this shit again mm-hmm. what you mean you're ready to go and he's like no nah, i'm serious this time like let's go like let's drop this shit and i'm like when you want to drop it he's like let's drop it next week i said bet next week come around i said what happened with my team, you know, <laughs> they told me that it just, we gotta, because I didn't know I had to go do this and do that and yada, yada, yada. So it's like, he, he's impulsive, but his team also oversee everything and they wanna make sure that everything is perfect. Mm-hmm. And I'm not mad at that. Like he's Will Smith, you know what I mean? So he gotta- I mean, he's a superstar. Right, so he gotta make sure that it's, it, it's the right temperature. So when you're sitting down and you're creating music with Will Smith, I um, mean, we haven't heard music from him in a while. Yeah. Are you, because he is such a big star. I've met Will a couple of times. Are you, are you, you realize he's a big star, but since you're friends, is it just Will? Because like Marshall, big star. Right, right. Will, big star. I mean, right. these are not just like average right, people. Right. So you mean like my relationship with them, are they just regular people to me at this point? Yeah, I mean, they are at this point. But I mean, when you're creating with him, are you looking at him like this is Oscar winning, this is... This is Will Smith, Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Of course, bro. It's like, especially like the first time, you know, the first time that we recorded together, I'm just like starstruck in the studio. You know what I mean? It's like I'm trying to give him direction, you know what I mean? And it's like, you know, he's, he's um, when I'm in the studio with him, he's a student. He tells me, I'm a student. Teach me. Show me. 
Mm -hmm. I'm shooting movies and shit. I'm tapped out of the game. You got to put me on to what's how to the new shit, how to, you know what I mean? So it's like when we in the studio and we recording, you know what I mean? And he's rapping, you know, and I'm just like, eh, don't say it like that. Say it like this. Well, yeah. I mean, if Will's yeah. going to do a song with you, you know he wants it to be a hit. 100%. So it's like, um, no, but I love that. That was a joke because he hit Chris Rock at the Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> So you're sitting really? at home in your mansion, in your Olympic-sized pool with the big screen, watching the Oscars, and here comes my friend, this is Will, walking up, sta up the stairs and slaps the hell out of Chris Rock. What does that text look like? Send him a voice note. It wasn't even a text, it was a voice note. But, but, um, I can say that because I've been around him very good energy, always. I knew he was really, really mad when I watched that shit. Mm -hmm. I could tell that that shit wasn't no, I don't even know how people thought that that was part of the show. Like mm -hmm. you could, he's not that guy to do that, right? So um, when I seen that shit, it was just like, damn. Like I knew he was, I knew, I, I knew he was pissed off. But yeah, I sent him a voice note. But like me, do you feel like he deserves redemption? Because I mean, like we all fall down and we haven't seen Will fall of down course. his whole career, of really. Course, of course. But, you know, I think everybody deserves redemption. You feel me? Like, especially someone like him, he don't, you know, he, he, he doesn't ever really do shit like that. You know what I mean? So it's like something, something, that shit was deep rooted. You know what I mean? It's probably some behind the scenes shit that we don't even know that happened that made that happen, you know what I mean? But um, again, I mean, shit, he about to drop Bad Boys 4. He's dropping movies. I think that people are over it. I you, think, and you're in Bad Boys 4. Yes, sir. And I think people are over it. And I don't think people are really looking at Will right now like, oh, you did this, you know? Mm -hmm. Which is fucked up because when we look at Chris Rock, you'd be like, you got slapped, right? That's not something that 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 that's not gonna go away for a long time. But he got a forty million dollar bag over at Netflix afterwards. I mean, so that's I mean, what I'm saying. Like again, when you right. go back to that, I'm talking about the people though. Yeah, I think the people. I mean, he knows that. You know that. But you know, the average person doesn't know that. So whenever we see Chris Rock, or we look at him, or we we watch a movie of Chris Rock, the first thing you're thinking is like, damn, you got slapped, right? That's like that shit ain't never gonna go away. But when we see Will Smith now, I don't think people are like, oh, you slapped Chris Rock. I just think people are like, it, it is what it is. I don't know. So you're in Bad Boys for, is it because you're a bad boy? Because, <laughs> see, you know, I, I know you. Should I pause that? Can I pause that one? <laughs> like, no, no, you have to I've been it. staying away from the fucking pause. <laughs> no, no there'll, like, be, there'll be possible <laughs> moments. We're just getting started. So, like, are you a bad boy? What, what are you doing in Bad Boys? You're clearly a bad boy. Yeah, I'm a, a gang leader. You're a gang leader? Yeah. Okay, like a vice lord, a no, no, gangster not, disciple, yeah. blood crib. Because orange is in, is orange even a orange street? Yeah. I don't know. No, nah, I don't. I don't really. I don't really think there's a name for the gang in the yeah. movie. But I, I play a gang leader. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay, but in real life, your music is very brilliant. Very there's depth to it all. Yeah. Um, you be talking your shit on mm -hmm. a lot of the songs, but. Behind all of that, mm -hmm. like, would we find out one day that you're like some big crime boss or like nah, nah, part nah, of some nah. big ring that you weren't supposed to be a part of or something? Nah, I'm not a gang member, a crime That's boss. That's not your thing? Nah. Nah, like I'll punch somebody in the face. Yeah. I'll fight, you feel me? Like I'm, but I'm not, I'm not out here and, and on no gang shit, you feel me? Why do you have so much security? I think you came here with more security than anybody that's ever been here. Mm -hmm. I mean, we recently saw an interview with uh, one of the artists who did Drink Champs, and mm -hmm. he said that uh, L.A. is one of the most dangerous places for a rapper to come. Is yeah. it just because it you're traveling? Move out here. Like, whenever I travel, you feel me? You just never know. You know, yeah. I travel in a bus, so, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I think the safety of me is the most important because, again, I got kids and I got family, and if something happens to me, you know, it's something, then it's a trickle-down effect. So I got to make sure at all times I'm good. So you talk about your kids and being a father. Why, when we did research, we didn't learn much about your biological father? 
Um, because it's not really a story to tell. He's just a bitch ass nigga. That's really what it comes down to. So your your dad's black. Your biological dad's black. Your mom is white. Mm-hmm. And so you say he's a bitch ass nigga. Bitch ass nigga. That's it. That's all it comes down to. So you don't have no relationship with him not at all. And he's alive. Unfortunately. 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 Wait. So the 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 the, the relationship between you all is that bad? Yeah. Is it because of what I'm just gonna ask? So I don't know. Is it because of something he did to your mom? Nah, not nothing he did to my mom. Um, I just don't respect him. Mm-hmm. I just don't respect him. And I think even more, furthermore, when you become a father and you know you become a parent and you know your certain instincts kick in and you know what I mean? And so you look at your kids and you just don't understand why, you know what I mean? Every man is not protective over his kid. Every man is not there. Or, Every man is not, you know, um, present. Not just present. You know, it wasn't like the nigga was absent like that. He was just a bitch ass nigga. You know what I mean? It's just really what it comes down to. He's just, he's just somebody that, um, you know, he's a perfect example of what not to be. You know, he was just a, you know, he just, you know what I mean, like. The, the, the nigga is just, he's just a bitch ass nigga. There's, really not, I can, there's, there's not more much I can say about the, to describe the fact he's just a bitch ass nigga. Like, bitch ass nigga is deep though. Cause like, I don't have, my dad's dead. He died, I think, last year, but, and we didn't have a relationship towards yeah. the end. And I talked about it on the Breakfast Club. I'd be lucky if this nigga died. Really? Facts. But where, where does the animosity come from though? I mean, because I see you with your kids when you call. Yeah. And I know how much you love your kids and your mom. And, and it's funny you say, like, he's the example of what not to be, because clearly you've used that as the template of what not to be, because mm-hmm. you're the complete opposite. Mm-hmm. But bitch ass niggas, like, that's deep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's a bunch of deep rooted shit that, you know, that, um, a bunch of deep rooted shit that would never be resolved mm. you know and it's just like i just feel like some people just don't deserve to live you know and that's just it why don't you put that in the song because i want to hear that story i mean because clearly i can feel it because i don't want to talk about that nigga. Mm-hmm. i don't want to get into that mm-hmm. you know i don't like i don't even want to give him any more you know what i mean like he's just a bitch ass nigga, and it's just like i'm so grateful to be a father you know um because I get to undo all of the, you know, I get to I get to be what I what I would have wanted, you know. What break I'm the cycle. Break the cycle and yeah. be what I would have wanted, just in a man, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, but yeah, he just he's just a bitch ass nigga. It's really, I mean, no. The reason why yeah. I ask is as you talk and as I've listened to the music, I was yeah. playing all as soon as I got the plane this morning. I was playing all morning, all afternoon, um, and then just the intersection with you and Marshall. And remember, he did the song about his mom. Mm-hmm. You know, you. Yeah, that's all I'm just asking. Is it is it something that would ever be told in art later? Uh-huh. Put it like this, bro. I would be um, if I didn't get to fuck him up, then I would have more feelings. You guys already had an altercation. If I didn't get to beat the shit out of that nigga, then I would have, I would have, my feelings would be even more intense. That's the that that the fact that I got to fuck him up. And I know you, a lot of people watching is like, oh, how you how how could you? Just know that there's levels to shit, right? So it's like once well, certain lines are crossed and there's no coming back, or whatever, whatever. At that point, you don't you don't you don't become my father anymore. Mm-hmm. Now you're a stranger. Right when certain things are said and certain lines are crossed, now you're a stranger, right? So if I didn't get to fuck him up, then I would then I would feel more of a way. Mm. That shit, the fact that I did get to fuck him up is what makes me like, you know what I'm saying? Like like that gave you a release to not go too far. I mean, it's, it's already too far, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? But um, 
but yeah, I'm, I mean, that's that's one thing I'm happy about that I got to fuck him up. Mm. And th so your stepdad, that's your dad. That's my dad. And you guys have a good relationship. That's the nigga that taught me how to fight. That's the nigga that taught me how to, you know, be a man. Mm -hmm. That's the nigga that taught me everything. That's the nigga that, you know what I'm saying, taught me the streets. Nigga, that's the nigga that, you know what I'm saying, showed me what, what it was, what it ain't. He's it's, still with your mom now? Um, Yeah. Yeah. I can say that. You know, yeah. They're married. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, But that's the nigga that really, you know what I mean? Yeah, see, I was never super close with my dad, but I, I could never see a mm -hmm. stepdad as my dad. But then again, I get it. I mean, I get it if you were like raised with him and you know mm -hmm. he taught you all those things. That's that's different. If I didn't have a stepdad, then I I, I would I'd be way I I would just be a fucking menace, bro. If I didn't have my step pops, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? If he wasn't there to to guide me, you know what I'm saying? But he's also a real nigga too, and he was a gang member, nigga. And he, you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. that nigga is a nigga that really, you know what I'm saying? He's the reason why like I could be a stepfather. Mm -hmm. You feel me? He's the reason why I'm able to be a stepfather or I'm able to, you know, do certain, if, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't even, you know what I'm saying? Like, shout out to my step pops, yo. Who, who was my real father, by the way? Shout out to Mike Jones, mm. yo. But you're not a stepdad right now. Cause I don't even know how many people you're dating. Are you dating anybody right now? I know he's gonna start with this. No, <laughs> I'm, I'm just, no, I'm just, I mean, we're in the vein of like being a father. So like your father, you're, you have two kids? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're a father to your two kids, and you're a stepfather to how many other people's kids? <laughs> Yo, Jason. <laughs> now, because you're such a perfect, you have a, you said the bitch ass nigga was the template of what not to be, and then the stepdaddy taught you how to be a stepdaddy to everybody else. Was I've been, so what I'm saying is like, I've been, I've been that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, you, I, you, didn't, you didn't think you was going to come here and we was just be deep I the have, whole man, time. I, I have, can I pause that? All right. That's a pause right there, pause. <laughs> All right. Oh, oh, in fact, hold on. Yeah. Let me give you your first gift. Oh, for real? Y'all brought me a gift? Yeah, of course. We give gifts here. For real? Yes. Wow, man. I appreciate Just that. Unzip that. Oh, pause. Can I? Ain't <laughs> <laughs> you no know, shit about to jump out at me, my nigga. Pause. <laughs> no, no, look at the top. <laughs> <laughs> you got to turn around for the camera to catch it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This yeah, thing. so you know you wear a bunch of jewelry, um, and it, it says this, right, this camera right here. Uh, it? it says, "Hope everything fits." Pause. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a pretty big box. So thank, um, you, thank you, bro. No, no problem. So you thank you. No problem. All right, mm -hmm. so you've been a stepfather before. Yeah. How long ago? I've been a stepfather before. Like how long? I mean, I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I've been there. I'm not, I'm, I don't have anything here that says that you were. Let me see. Stop nah, I've been, I've been, I've dated women that had kids. Really? Yeah. Mm. You dated women that's gonna have kids too, right? Hmm. What you talking about, nigga? Don't be. I mean, my no, because my notes just said that you used to date Ashanti. But I mean, there oh, were photos. You made it seem like a nigga. What? I'm like, what the fuck you heard? Nigga? No, I'm about I didn't to have, have a kid. Baby on the I'm way. like, yeah, nigga, no. hold up. What? Yeah. No, no, uh, that has happened though with other people where I knew before they knew. Yeah. Nick Cannon. Yeah, I found out baby number twelve. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. Shout out Nick Cannon. I think you can get busy. Yeah. So you dated Ashanti. Mm -hmm. How was that? It was dope. She's a really dope person. She really is. No, she's sweet. She's an amazing person. So how did that happen? Because you both are so private. Mm -hmm. She doesn't post about guys she's dated mm -hmm. uh, other than, of course, Nelly now. And you don't post about the women that you date. Did the internet catch you guys? I mean, there were photos of her rubbing her, your hair or you rubbing her hair. You guys show a little affection. Um, so we, she, um, <laughs> <laughs> because you never talked nah, about it. Nah, I don't talk. You know what it is? I'm a private nigga. I don't really talk about it. But what I do, what I will say is that um, she's an amazing person and I'm super happy for her. I mean, she's about to have a baby. And I think um, I'm just excited. I know how much she wanted to be a mom. So, um, How'd you know? 
I mean, we had those we had those conversations for sure, you know. And it's like, I just I wasn't at a a, a place in my life where I wanted I wanted that, you know what I mean? At that time, you guys talked about having a baby together. We talked we talked about a lot of shit, bro. Like that was we was you know what I mean? So that was your girl. Well, he was. Were you in love with her? Yeah, I would say I loved her. For sure. What? Yeah, I would say I loved her. Really? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You in love with her? Yeah. She's easy to person. She's a very no, easy she's, person to be in love with, though. She's one of the nicest, sweetest she's people. Very to easy to be in love with. She's dope. Super dope person, bro. Like, for real. I'm not just saying that just to, you know, but. Um, How'd you let her get away? Again, it's. I knew that. I knew that um, what she wanted and what she needed, I don't feel like I could have fulfilled that at that time. You know what I mean? Like, Shanti's been in the game for, you know, 25 years, you know. I just got in the game, and it was like, I know what, what she wanted and what she needed, and it, and it just like, I don't feel like I was in a place in my life that could commit to that. And I was honest about it, you know? And, um, but, you know, I'm happy she got away. You know, I'm happy that she ended up going and spun the block with Nelly. Um, and now she's having a baby, I'm super proud of her. And they seem happy. And they seem happy. For sure, and I'm 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 happy. That. I said they seem happy, and you put an emphasis on seem. No, 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 not no, 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 no okay, shit like that. Trying to catch it. No, 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 not on no shit like that. They, <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do feel like um, that they are happy. Okay, they look like they look happy. They look happy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And but you're happy for her. Super happy for her, bro. Like she's gonna be an amazing mom. So I would tell her that all the time, you know. But what she needed was someone to be with her, to be there. That's what, you know. I have kids. You know, back home, it's like, I'm not moving to New York. You're not about to, you know, move to where I was at. And then it's just like, we wouldn't, like, if that was to happen, you know? And it's like, when you, when you, when you, um, in that situation, I mean, everybody wants to feel like they're building towards something, you know? And it's like, I just, I just knew that what she needed was, was, um, what she has now, mm -hmm. and I'm happy for her. Mm -hmm. But we didn't really, we didn't really have a lot of uh, problems in our shit. Like we really vibed and we really got along. And it was a really dope situation, and it lasted well, about two years. Mm -hmm. yeah. Would you have married her? I, I mean, would I have married her? Oof. Because she's eight years older than know. you. So, like, do you like older women? I do feel like there's something about older women that like I, I gravitate towards. And I just think it's because of old, older women understand certain shit that young women don't. You're a Leo, so you're a lion, you want the cougar. Just a bunch of jungle sex. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's not. <laughs> I'm just saying. Nah, 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 it ain't, it ain't even, it's not even all about like sex though. It's like even on like a, you know, like an intellectual level, like, you know what I'm saying? Like I just feel like older women just like, I just, on a, just a different level mentally, you know what I mean? I'm not saying all older women, but um, I never looked at the, the age gap between me and Ashanti. I never cared, I never really cared about that, you know what I mean? Like, um, but yeah, that, that's, I hope, does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. So what other famous girl got away? What? What you mean? I mean, cause you were just on The Breakfast Club and you didn't bring up Angela Yee. I never was with Angela. You weren't? Nah. Oh, that was just a rumor? Hell yeah. I never was with Angela. Where'd that rumor come from? I don't know. I swear to God, I never, I never even texted Angela. You never even had a text conversation. Mm. So would you date a, do, do you want a famous girlfriend? Because I feel like one of the formulas in entertainment now is famous couples. Meg the Stallion. Mm. I mean, have you shot your shot at Megan? Nah. Would you? When I shoot my shot, I mean, Megan is not really my type. Well, I know you told me you're in love with SZA. 
Why you, come on, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? I'm in love with SZA. Why I you mean, do that? That's a big I can't I mean, be I'm your friend love. and not drop something. Yeah, I but know. you know what I'm saying? In love is crazy. Like I think you're blushing. SZA, you know you're blushing. SZA is bad. Brown people for blush. Sure. She's bad, but you're in, blushing. In right love now. is crazy. You're literally blushing. Right I'm not blushing, but that's you're crazy. You're literally blushing. Wow, SZA, look what you did to my friend. I think SZA is gorgeous, right? Okay. But okay, sorry. I, I won't say in love. In love is crazy. I don't even. I don't even. Don't edit it. I don't even know Shorty. Like, I'm, you know, you feel me? I think she's gorgeous, gorgeous woman, super talented. That's not how you talk about her on the phone with me. Come so on, we're man. not going to do that. <laughs> See, I got to do that. I knew you were going to do this shit, Jordan. We're not going to do that. Aye, aye, aye. Wait, wait. The way you light up when I say scissors. No, no, no. Stop that, my nigga. Join her. Join her. I lit up because I didn't expect you to you say see that. The inflection in his voice has changed. Yeah, yeah. The energy. He grabbing his drink. He, he ain't nothing in the cup. Join her. <laughs> The way you line, the way you light up when we talk about SZA, we gonna downplay it, right? Cause come she on. watches. Come on, come on, come okay, on. Okay, okay. We'll SZA, come back. is bad, but you make. Come on, my nigga. <laughs> oh, I can't. As soon as this camera cut, I'm getting it. But pause. Sorry. <laughs> you having fun it yet? Was. I drink all the water. See you trying. To... It was really good. Wait. So, um. Lil Nas X, back in the day, you had some controversy. Well, you know, you made headlines when you criticized the uh, video that he had, uh, Montero, because, you know, tons of kids will see what he put out. I had my own opinion about it, too. I think sometimes his art, I get it, but then sometimes I think it's just a little too much. Um, You were quoted as saying that uh, you think the biggest problem for me is the fact that he doesn't understand Old Town Road is every kid's anthem. Children love him for that record. They tune in, subscribe to his channel. So with no disclaimer, he just dropped some left field-ish and all of our kids seen it. Shaking my head. Yeah. I mean, you said to the Kids' Choice Award. You know, he did the Kids' Choice. I mean, I think that he was marketed, you know, um, as like the guy, you know, that kids can, you know what I'm saying, sing their music to and vibe and shit. And it's like he's, did the Kids' Choice Award shit. And I just think that he, um, tons of subscribers like on his page um, are kids. And with no warning, you know, just out of respect for the kids or the parents, it's like, with no warning, you know, you drop a, what he dropped, you know, and it's like all the kids that were subscribed to that, you know, seen that, you know what I mean? And my son was subscribed, you know, to that. Loved the Old Town Road song. And then I didn't, I I wasn't too fond of that. Um, But not ask you if I was tripping. Like, am I tripping about it? No, I've I've been critical of Lil Nas X and some of his creativity. I mean, I get it, but I also feel like when it comes to black gay men, Mm -hmm. uh, the commercial machine gets behind them when they push an agenda Mm -hmm. that sometimes I think crosses the line even for me. But, uh, you know, I I love everybody expressing their art the way they want to, but I just don't know, like, who is his, who is he targeting? Like, who is your target audience, you Mm -hmm. know? Like I've listened to your music, I know mm-hmm. you 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 know your your music is not targeting children. It's mm-hmm. not for children. Mm-hmm. It's not you know so, mm-hmm. and it's not for TikTok. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Can we give it up for an artist whose music is not for TikTok? Appreciate it. Please, I know you did the whole experimental album. That was when you wanted to be a TikTok rapper. What the hell was that? No, it wasn't. It wasn't. I didn't want Please to don't. If, if I see you do a TikTok, a if TikTok. your big ass do a TikTok dance, <laughs> I'm telling you right now, you getting blocked on my phone. Listen. And we ain't talking no more about SZA or anything. Listen, I'm a, <laughs> That's most of what we talk about. Listen. <laughs> I don't do TikTok dances, bro. I promise. Right? No he t- hot about that SZA shit. I can see it. No, nah, no, nah, I'm not hot. No, because I seen the same look when we put that picture of you up at the award show. This year, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, so I know when you tight. Okay. Um, pause, pause. 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 <laughs> Crazy. Wait, so that song, um, is it What If I'm Gay? Mm, um, when I found out you had a song called is What If I'm Gay? I believe it was called um, I Might Be Gay? Nah, shut the fuck up. I should be gay? Shut the fuck 
I'm gay. I think it might have been what if I was it what if I was what gay? If I was yeah. gay? Yeah. You wrote the song. It was a couple years. It was so long ago, bro. It was okay, like five, six, what six, if I was yeah. gay? Yeah. Okay, because yesterday, so I just flew to Atlanta and did the mm -hmm. Cam Newton podcast. And on the show, Cam yeah. Newton and I were talking about when a person knows or asks the question, what yeah. if I'm gay? Yeah. And I thought about you, pause. Whoa, come on. Man. No, the song. Uh, <laughs> Yo, Jay. The song. <laughs> when these cameras turn off, man. <laughs> I'm out of here. So listen, in regards to that record, now, and I'm sorry, let me set it up for real. Yeah. Because when we talked about that song, mm -hmm. I felt like had it dropped now, yeah. the world needed that record right, right now. So listen, and I stayed away, this is the first time I'm gonna, I've ever addressed this situation. Which is why I'm asking. Right. So, when I'm creative storytelling records, right, a lot of these records provide healing, right? It's just what it is. Now, sometimes I talk about racism. I, talk, I pay, always pick a subject that people don't talk about, right? ADHD. ADHD, racism, opioid crises, and fucking suicides and all kind of shit, right? But this subject was important and I wanted to speak on this subject for sure. And it was meant to have a video. Right, same way I'm not racist. If you heard I'm not racist before I'm not racist drop and you just, the video drop and you just heard I'm not racist and you would assume that I'm just the biggest racist piece of shit, right? Just, you would have to see the visuals in order to get it, like, oh, okay. So, when I did the record, right, the verses started, but what if I told you that I was different? What if I told you that something's missing? What if I told you, and the verse ends with saying, yo, what if I told you that I was gay? there was supposed to be a character that played the, the role of that, right? And he was saying all these things. George Lopez was supposed to play the father of that boy, right? Mm -hmm. Eminem was supposed to do the verse for George Lopez to lip sync the, the words. He was supposed to play the father, mm -hmm. right? And I was trying to get either Frank Ocean or, or Sam Smith on the hook. Right, and then this was this record was 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 gonna be crazy, but then the record got leaked. So when the record gets leaked, it's like now I look like the 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 the, the, the gayest nigga in the world, right? <laughs> Which I wasn't too happy about. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? You know, I'm screaming at Paul Rosenberg and shit, like, what the fuck? Because it got leaked from that side. Mm. You feel me? I'm like, yo, what the fuck, bro? Like, mind you, nigga, I'm I don't want my art to be. I don't want it to be displayed in the wrong way. Exploited in the wrong way. Right. Yeah. It's like if if it had dropped with the video and the visuals, then it would just would have been crazy, right? There'd be context and people would get it. hundred percent. And a lot of and, and and I also understood that a lot of people that are homophobic probably wouldn't have fuck with me, which is cool. I don't give a fuck who fuck with me, who don't fuck with me. The message is a message, right? And it's just what it is, right? And I wanted Marshall to bring the message home, you know, and he did a a, a great job at that but he told it from a friend's perspective, but it was supposed to be from a parent's perspective, right? And this is where I had asked him if he can just redo the, you know, whatever. But when that record and that, 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 I was right in the middle of facilitating the music video for it and trying to get it all, because I didn't require, I didn't need Marshall to be there for the video. I was in complete control of the music video, so it was like, George was on point, he was on board, I had the actors, you know what I mean? Video was gonna start off with two uh, kids in the bed, you know, dad would have walked in on them, you know what I mean? And Highly controversial. Highly controversial, but, right? But, but that's creating what the, fuck the conversation. I, exactly, but you yeah. create the conversation. That's what I do, right? And if I felt like if anybody could do it, it should be me because this is the shit I do, right? And I'm not worried about, I, was, I didn't give a fuck about the backlash because it, was, it would have dropped with the video. But then when the shit got leaked, I was mad as fuck about that one. I ain't gonna hold you, that shit pissed me off. But it wasn't their fault. They got hacked, whatever, whatever. And then the record gets leaked and it's just like all the tabloids, are, Jordan Lucas comes out the closet, join Eminem and Jordan Lucas you say that they're gay, it's like, it's no different than if you would have heard I'm not racist without the video. And, right? and neither one yeah. of you addressed it? Nah, I wanted to so I wanted to address it so bad. But my manager, my publicist, Marshall, all of them was like, don't say nothing because if you put 
fire on it, then it's just like everyone's gonna see. It's like if you just don't say shit, it'll all go away. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what happened, right? Um, but again, this is a record that I really wanted to do, and I and and you know Marshall has been um, accused of being homophobic for a long time, and. I felt like this record was a good record for him to get on because it would have showed people that he's not homophobic, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And he was really speak on some shit. And if I could have got <coughs> Sam Smith or if I would have got Frank Ocean on that hook, it would have been the Elton John moment that M had at the awards, you know? So I really wanted to facilitate and put some dope shit together. And if I had to step in front of the bullet and be known as the, you know, then whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, the record got leaked. Mm -hmm. Never came out after that. It was like, I can't drop it now. I was like, I can't drop it. It, it fucked up the whole rollout. So now it's just like. It's, so, so a record like that that would have big impact today just has to die? Yeah, it's crazy. It just it just has to, right? Because it's like it has to because the rollout was so fucked up, bro. And it's just like, it just made us look crazy. And it's like, bro, it's just like, it got, it got, it got so like, crazy but me and Marshall were both mad you know what I mean but not at each other though no never were, were you mad at the reaction the situation or the person that got it I happened? was mad at the whole shit because yeah. for my whole my whole thing is I was extremely mad um with Eminem's team not Marshall but his team I was extremely upset at them because um they're so uh Ex extreme on um, hacks and leaks and shit so that when we went, like I didn't, when I shot the music video with Marshall, I had to have earphones in because they didn't want nobody on set to have the song before it came out. They're extremely private, right? And it was just like, that's the last team that I thought would ever have anything leaked. You know what I mean? I couldn't even get access to some of the records because it was Fort Knox, right? So yeah. it was like, so for it to get out was just like, how for the them fuck this exactly. get out? How the fuck did this get out? Yeah, I'm shooting a whole entire music video with earphones in because y'all don't niggas didn't want the song to get leaked. But then my fucking record gets leaked when it's supposed to. You know, you guys were supposed to make sure that this shit didn't fucking come out. You know, and it's like. I was so frustrated and pissed the fuck off. Were you that. also mad because like that's the moment? That's that was the moment. Yeah. That record was gonna that moment for me and Marshall would have yeah. been crazy. And I feel like his team dropped the ball on that. And and um it really, it really, it really pissed me the fuck off. But um after we let the shit ride and let it go away and whatever whatever happened after that, it was just like the whole conversation died down. And it was just like, whatever. Then we just decided like just to leave, leave this subject alone and mm -hmm. just let that shit go. You're friends with J. Cole. Have mm -hmm. you all collaborated? Yeah, of course. You have, but not on this album? Mm -hmm. Not on the current album? No, no, no. Okay. Um, are you going to collaborate again? Do you yeah. all talk frequently yeah, like about yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you all are both very similar, right? Like yeah. who would you, who would you, if you had to say you're similar to or that you all are within the same family of talent? Mm. You mean like similarity between me and Cole? Or yeah, like me like and Kendrick, artistry. Kendrick, yeah. Cole, um, Drake sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, oh, who, who would you say? I, I, I think J. Cole. Yeah. I mean, that's who first comes to mind for yeah. me. Yeah, I can, I can say Cole. Why, does, why is everybody mad right now at Kendrick Lamar? Um, I don't even know people are mad at him, but I think... Isn't there like this whole rap beef right now where everybody's unfollowing everybody and this person don't like this person? It's, who is this? Kendrick, Rick Ross, Drake? Or is, yeah, I, I mean, know. are hip-hop artists getting emotional these days now? Because, uh, yeah, damn, I hit somebody with an unfollow, and all of a sudden everybody's unfollowing everybody. I think Kendrick, this Cole and Drake... But it's hip-hop. Right, but a lot of people like... Um, don't really like the competitive nature anymore, I guess. And it's because everything's kumbaya and everyone's, you know, that's what hip hop is today. Not on the female side. Nah, on the female side, they go crazy. What? And they're crazy for they sure. They popping, sure. they popping, yeah. uh, uh, what's the, the thing called when you get your booty done? BBLs. They, they, they popping BBLs over there. Everybody's yeah. getting it. Yeah. So why are the men getting soft now? Um, I just don't think that they want to engage in like, I, I don't know, I have no, I, I used to, I used to, 
I used to love that shit. When I first came out, I started going in over niggas' beats and I started dissing niggas. I know, Benzino. To... You went for his neck. I never... What neck? <laughs> Why? I never... I... And number one, number two, I never fucking... So is that why you follow Coyle Ray on Instagram? Because you, nah, I fuck I Coyle Ray. Coyle Ray is fire. I fuck with Coyle Ray. Have you guys ever hooked up? Nah, we, <laughs> nah, we never hooked up. I like, I actually like Coyle Ray. I like Coyle Ray. Yeah. Coyle Ray is dope. Like, and I'm, she's talented too. Yeah, she's super talented. I fuck with Coyle Ray. But you and Benzino used to have your little moments where you had beefs over the beat. Now people just unfollow and like every. I mean, because I feel yeah. like these are all. I don't. I ain't never had a beef with Benzino though. What you but what I'm saying is, when you all had your thing, it was for hip hop. It was music. Right? Right, but I never got into it publicly with Benzino. Okay. Like, I, me and Benzino never had a, a public... He inboxed me some, some shit one time where he was trying to be a tough guy or whatever. He was mad at he was mad at Eminem and, you know, whatever, whatever. But um, I ain't never even... I never well, the even, beef was with Tori. It was with... Oh, me and Tori went at it. Y'all had a beef. Awesome. We never had a beef. We just had some... It was competitive shit. You feel me? Like, Do you think you shot Meg? Honestly, I don't. I I don't even pay. I I don't pay attention to it. You know when they start stuttering, they don't want to have nothing to do with the Dude, question. I don't, we don't pay on. attention to none of that shit. I just. So, yeah. is Kendrick yeah. the goat, or a goat? Like, is who is the goat in hip hop these days? Because back in my day, it was Tupac a, and Biggie. Yeah, I think there's. I think um, everybody has a time, right? So I think that there's multiple goats. There's not one but it's go. It's all subjective. No, because um, who, who, it depends on what you would consider what, what, you know, what a goat is. Right? You know what I'm saying? Well, Jay Z is going to always be. A, he's been goaded, um, but he's not. A, he's not. He's not in circulation right now. So Nas has been goaded, but he's not in circulation right now. Right. So who is the goat of who's in circulation right now? Because I went and saw Bad Bunny the other night. Bad Bunny is a goat. You see, that nigga's a goat. He's a goat, right? For sure. Goat. Right. And I didn't even know. He's, but so the interesting thing is, is this, there can be multiple goats at one time, right? It's like when Eminem was at his peak, he was a goat. But then Jay-Z was at his peak at the same time, and he was a goat too. So Drake can be a goat, and Kendrick can and be a goat, and Cole can, everybody can be a goat at this point. So why in hip-hop can there be multiple male goats, but in... Female hip hop, there can only be one. Why? Who says no, that? No, but that's what the people, you know, that's how the pe- it's the maybe it's the fan bases. Is yeah. it the fan bases? Yeah, but who's who would you consider the goat and female? I th- I I like you think that there yeah. could be multiple goats yeah. at once. Yeah, yeah. Multiple goats. That's not, I mean, you know, Lauren Hill's a goat. Nicki she, Minaj she, is a goat. She, Lauren Hill crazy though. Uh, yeah. But she's still, but musically, she's still like she, you know, she'll always be the goat. For sure. Okay, so we're talking about goats. One of the goats that's on the uh, new album is DMX. I was listening to that, getting ready uh, today. How crazy is it to drop a song and have a legend like that living out through your music? It's crazy. It really is because DMX is another one that's just like, you know, someone that's you know inspired me for sure throughout my career. Um, so to have him on the project, you know, his verse was so touching. Um, you know, it felt like he was still alive, you know what I mean? Um, I, I think you talked about it in the interview where uh, he had told you while you were collaborating that he didn't think he was going to live too much longer. Yeah. And then he died. No, I mean, I didn't think he was going to. I felt like he wasn't going to. You didn't think he was? Yeah. Why? Because of what? I just, I don't know. I just kind of had a feeling that he wasn't going to be someone that was going to live till he's 70, 80 years old. I just felt like he was going to go before his time at some point. Mm-hmm. You know? Do you feel like he got his flowers while he was alive? Not the way that he should have. Mm-hmm. But why does it happen like that? Because I feel the same with Nipsey, right? Like, yeah. here are all these people that we respect. I mean, uh, DMX is the first hip hop artist I saw back in the 90s who had like the littest performance. The whole, all I remember in Sacramento, I watched him perform. And all I can remember in my head vividly was how loud he was and how he ran back and forth the whole show. And it was just like the craziest energy, hit after hit after hit. And I still feel like when I think back about that time, I don't remember him really getting his flowers. I felt like he was like the greatest performer of all time. Like it hit like as, as far as like hip hop go, like 
you know, that performance you're talking about, I think he had the red, um, what should we call it on? The red overalls or what the overalls? I don't remember the color of the overalls Whoa. because at some point I remember him taking his top off. So he he, used to have, he had to have a shirt on. Maybe, I don't know. I remember. Yeah, I just, I, there's one performance that might have been like a Rolling Loud or it was somewhere that was crazy. He had like, it was like 100,000 people. Do you feel like you've gotten your flowers? Nah. It, it just happens. Like, you, a motherfucker won't get their flowers until they're dead. We know that. That's mm-hmm. just how it goes. And Biggie said it, nigga, you're nobody that somebody kills you. Mm. But I mean, we just, so the other night, Joyner came to the Hollywood Cares yeah. uh, Foundation uh, yeah. uh, dinner that I had to yeah. raise money to help these kids back home. And you've been very supportive of me and the work that I'm doing. Um, and you sat at the table next to Paris Hilton and Cardi B, or uh, yeah, next to uh, Paris Hilton and Cardi B mm-hmm. and across from Rihanna. And everybody there was giving you flowers, everybody there knew you. Do you feel like you get your flowers privately but you haven't gotten your flowers publicly. Publicly, yeah. We, when you talk about publicly, right? Yeah. Privately, for sure, right? But like, you know. Um, but then, but then, but then, there has been a lot of, you know, people to, to give me my flowers publicly. But they've been on um, with attached to certain records that I would release. Like when I dropped Devil's Work, you know, Ashanti gave. I mean, um, Rihanna gave me my flowers. Mm-hmm. She had posted, you know, a few videos of mine and would give me my flowers, you know. And then Marshall would, you know, he would speak out and publicly in interviews and, and give me my flowers, you know, over the incredible work of the music videos that he really fucks with. Um, so I've gotten my flowers publicly, but they was attached to certain bodies of work and things like that. Um, but even for that, like Chris Brown gave me my flowers. A lot of a lot of people have, you know, but um the other night was dope, you know what I mean? Like, um, there's so many people there that, that you know, had listened to the album that I didn't even know listened to the album. Mm-hmm. And they, they was really, you know, giving me the flowers. But I feel like um, I'm getting a lot of love on Not Now I'm Busy for sure. And the album, I'm getting a lot of flowers from people. But um, it's not going to happen the way that it happens when, when someone passes away, mm-hmm. you know? Why is that, though? I just think that that's just life, bro. It's not even in with music. It's just with people, you know? It's like you don't really value someone until they're gone. And then once they're gone, you start thinking about, you know, the small things that, you know, the small attributes that that person would have brought into your life that you didn't really realize before until they're gone. And you're like, damn, you know. Um, but on a music level, I think that when I'm gone, I think that the music videos would, would, would start to connect more with people than it. It will now. So before Joiner Lucas, you were a future Joiner. You yeah. just didn't see no future in that, or what? <laughs> <laughs> nah. So future Joiner, um, it was just future to be honest with you. And then future came out, took my whole shit. <laughs> so it's like right when your moment's yeah, about to go, something about, happens. Some, some always had, bro. Every fucking time. Somebody might be in your yeah. team leaking no, your moves. I'm every telling you. Fucking, I swear to God, I dropped that album the same fucking day. It's fucking, bro. It's like every time, every time. But I'm so used to it. I'm just, I be expecting shit to just be getting fucked up. And I'm just like, whatever. But yeah, so the nigga Future came out with the shit. And then Tyler the Creator had Odd Future that was there, like, dang. And I was like, oh, fuck this name. <laughs> and I just said, I'm almost gonna roll with my own shit. Jordan Lucas. And so, okay, yeah. then when you dropped this album, Kendrick dropped his, when you dropped your single, uh, Kendrick dropped the album? Kendrick, nah, dog, nah. <laughs> he dropped the fucking disc with. Yeah, with he, uh, Rick Ross. What was the disc with? No, I don't be no, checking was, this. Future was on a, on a disc song. Was, Wait, let's back up. Okay, so Kendrick dropped what at the same time? So Future and Metro dropped the album, but on that album, Kendrick was dissing Drake and dissing J. Cole on this one song on the album. And that happened at the same time the you same dropped. day I dropped my album. That shit overshadows my whole shit, right? And I'm just like, fuck, right? But I'm like, whatever. Like, my shit, this is a moment. It's good. It's, my album's going to just live forever, so it's cool. I wasn't tripping about it. Do you feel like that's a, like a marketing thing now where people have to drop disc records or a TikTok track in order for something to go viral? And get, I feel like it's mark for sure, for sure. Like, I feel like it, it, it's definitely marketing, but... Some niggas really got real problems with niggas, you feel me? Like, if I ever diss a nigga, like, I don't really be having real issues with niggas, you feel me? But sometimes I be, like, I be wanting to get into shit with niggas, like, 
Cause shit be boring, nigga. I be wanting to fucking just start some, start some shit. But then I, if I do that, then I'm corny. Jordan Lucas is corny, and yada yada yada. So I'm just like, I just have to just play the game and pray to God that somebody says my name or this is me first. Somebody with clout. Am I talking about the millions? Oh, trust all me, the, it ain't gonna happen. All the people that diss me are people not even worth. It. Right, like, that's what I'm the saying. The regular said niggas, the the, yeah. the, the, the the niggas. I'm talking like somebody that's got went platinum, multi platinum niggas. That's Doing big shit, selling records, a nigga that's in the chat, a nigga that's really on my way, diss me. I'm not. You know. I told you how we could get clout. What? Remember, I told you. I said we can go to a game because people don't really know we're friends. Now yeah, they know. We can go to a game. I tell this nigga. Let me tell you. I'm gonna tell them this conversation. <laughs> Wait, tell them what I told you we should. I'm do. gonna tell you first. I'm gonna tell them. I'm gonna tell you this. Com- I'm gonna tell the conversation. Okay. Because we're really so friends. So I say, Jay. I say, Yo. I said, Um. I said, let's kick it, nigga. He says, nah, I ain't trying to be seen out with you and shit. I said, why? He's like, because then once I do that, the niggas are going to start saying you're gay because you with me. I'm like, I don't give a fuck about that shit, my nigga. I don't care about that. You my nigga, bro. Like, I'm like, he's like, nah, you know, you don't mean that shit. I said, yeah, dude. I said, matter of fact, nigga, let's go to a motherfucking NBA game. He's like, nah. Nah, and you sit courtside. He said, Jordan, you tripping. I said, why? We can't sit. I can't sit courtside with my nigga and watch the fucking NBA game. Pause. Pause. He's like, <laughs> he's like, nah. If you do that, then the internet's gonna go crazy and nigga, everybody's gonna okay. call you gay. Everybody I said, my nigga, world. I'm the straightest nigga. Get the fuck out of here. I don't, I don't give a fuck about that shit. As the people gonna talk, I already dealt with the shit with the whole Eminem shit with the whole uh, the song. Yeah. I don't give a fuck about that. Then he says, all right, so fuck it. If that's what we doing, that's what we doing. He's like, I'm gonna get us matching outfits. <laughs> I said, why you gotta take it? Why you gotta fucking? Why? Why? Come on, my nigga. Because if Mm. we're gonna go viral, nah, I ain't trying to go viral, nigga. What the fuck? I'm not. This is not about to be a fucking. Wait. Pause. I got a gift for you right there. Right there. It's over there. Nah. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not opening that shit. Wait, just open it. Nah. No, just open it real quick. Just open it. Look, this is a nah. fun, yo, this is a fun show. Nah, man. nigga, what the just, fuck? You're the first guest to throw my gift on the ground. Pick yo, it what up. The it fuck, can be fragile. Man. What is this shit? Let me see, because I don't see what my we'll open it. I think I got one at the same time. Nah, nigga. Yo, James. What? Come so, on, my nigga. You know, what? you're you're from Boston. Bro. So I figure like matching green. Oh, well, they gave me two. It may not do my size. Jay. Oh, it's a jacket? See, this is like something you can wear at like a basketball game. Why are you trying to go viral, though? <laughs> this shit look comfortable. I ain't going to. No, it's really comfortable. Shout out to Rich from Fashion Nova. You know, and it's cost Why are you trying to go? Too. Why are you trying to make me look, you trying to make me look crazy, nigga? Well, no, we, I'm oh, just we got to dress the same. Look, look, look. I, look. This is what I told Floyd when we became friends. You're going to be friends with a gay dude. I'm going to do gay shit. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, is, nigga. Right? You, you don't got to drag me into the gay shit, though, right? Okay. It's like, nigga, let me, let me. Well, the gift sounded great. Uh, the material's a little too this soft. This shit, like, did not. Nah, it's loungewear. I'll, I'll rock this to go to, like. Here's the deal. We can, the we can wear these matching outfits to, like, one of your yogurt. Not, you have not, a not. juice bar or something like that, nah, right? Nah, you're not wearing What's together. the business you got in not Boston? that shit together. What's the, what's the business you got in Boston? Oh, wow. Huh? Oh, wow. Well, what is it? It's a frozen yogurt. It's okay, yogurt. I like frozen yogurt. I think, <laughs> I do. I eat frozen yogurt. Back home I, in Stockton, there's a, there used to be a, fro, a fro, <laughs> Tiger's yogurt I used to eat there as a kid, okay? So I'm saying, like, we couldn't be in Boston green for the Celtics going to get uh, Jason. frozen yogurt. All we just got to do when we order is just be like, can I get the swirl? No homo. <laughs> Okay, fine. What's the next single? <laughs> um, the next single off the Not Now I'm Busy? What do you mean? No, off of this album out right now. Oh, uh, the next single. That's, that's a good question. I mean, we don't know yet. We don't know yet. Like it could be so that's thing. another luxury of being independent where you just decide when, when you feel it? Yeah, you decide. Pause. You decide. <laughs> Everything ain't gonna be gay. I mean, I'm, we're, 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 we put the gay outfits away. Now I'm just asking. We, we 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 decide based off of like what's the most popping records on there, and then we just go with that one. Do you consider yourself the master P of this generation? That's a those are big shoes to fill. 
I mean, Master P, like, really, he did a lot of shit. Like, he put niggas on. You feel me? And it's like, I tried to put niggas on, and it's like, that's a different time. You feel me? Because you can't force somebody to really have the drive, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so Master P, like, really, like, he put, a, he put like, a, a lot of niggas on. You know what I'm saying? But maybe at that time, niggas was different. Niggas was hungry. Niggas, I don't know. I mean, now it's like, niggas is different. Would you ever start a label? And and put other people on. Nah, I'm all I've turned off from that shit. I've already done it. I've already tried to put niggas on. I've signed niggas. I've gave niggas bread. I fucking invested in niggas' careers. I try to put niggas on, and niggas just don't have the. It's the the hunger, um, and it's really a bad investment to be honest with you, because you really can't control what someone's gonna do. You know. Yeah, but you were a good investment that somebody invested in. Right, but I also. Um, had to drive and I also was a student. I was teachable. I didn't put myself in those situations. I was gonna fuck it up for my investor, mm -hmm. right? I wasn't a liability. You know, you don't know who's gonna be a liability. So it's like, you know, you can invest in an artist and that artist can turn around and become a liability, go to jail and then now your whole shit is fucked up and you just invested a million dollars or 500,000 into somebody who just went to jail what do you think about the TikTok ban? Are you here for it? The TikTok ban? Um, I mean, because then I think music will go back to being music. That's what I said on Twitter. I'm not mad at the idea of that, of what you said, right? Mm -hmm. um, but you don't think that, you, you don't feel like things have to like change sometimes? You feel like things should just stay the same? I feel same. like music can evolve, like watching Beyonce evolve into country music is the evolution of music. She creates bodies of work mm -hmm. now the only music I hear is what people are playing on TikTok. I went to your album to hear the song with you and Jelly Roll, and then I said, let me just play the whole album. And then when you hear it, you hear the melodies, you hear the different cadences, you hear the, the word plays, mm -hmm. you hear, I mean, you hear the storytelling. And, and then you see the visual, you're like, yo, this is, you forget what art is supposed to look like. Mm -hmm. I feel like now, if somebody's not coming up with a creative dance and then put it on TikTok to go viral, like nobody hears it. This is crazy. Mm -hmm. So with TikTok gone, I tweeted, oh my God, your favorite rapper is going to go away once TikTok is banned. No, because what happens is once TikTok is gone, another company is going to become TikTok, right? And it's, it's so not, they'll just recreate it. Recreate it just in another way and then people are going to, it ain't ever going to go away. Mm -hmm. But isn't, yeah. but, but I feel like with streaming and then mm -hmm. now TikTok, like music is like, bodies of work is slowly just evaporating. Yeah. Right? Um, I think that music is becoming less and less timeless. Yeah. Right. It's all created for the moment. That's crazy. And this is what um, the first Not Now and Busy, right? It was like a lot of the music on there was like moment shit, like shit that was happening at that time. And it was like I started to feel like I wasn't really being true to myself. I didn't feel like, and this is all because I was getting outside opinions mm -hmm. from, from people telling me what they think my shit should sound like. And it was like me just listening and saying, you know what, let me try this, let me try that. And eventually it led to like 70% of the album being, they not even sounding like Joyner, you mm -hmm. know? And it was just like, I just didn't, I was just like pulling a plug on this shit and I'm starting over, everybody shut the fuck up. I don't want to hear nobody else's opinions. I'm going to do what I want to do. But did you feel like you were selling yourself out? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I just, and when you say selling yourself out, what I would call that is not being true to myself. All right, well listen, um, We've talked a lot of, about a lot of things here, but now it's time to get to what everybody showed up for, and that's the games. What game? Let's go. All right, you know we like to play games here at uh, the Jason Lee Show, so the first game we're gonna play is called Smash or Pass. <laughs> on the side of your chair, there should be a paddle right there. I'm gonna drop a name and a face will pop up on the screen, and then you'll just put the paddle up, and you'll either say Smash right. or Pass. All right, now in your song, Waiting on This, off your new album, you said all my celebrity crushes, I hit them already, uh, but we're still gonna play this game. All right, uh, the first one is a friend of the show and everybody knows I love her, Chloe Bailey. Chloe Bailey. So I wait, what you, do I, do Just I, tell me what you told me on the phone. Do I hold this to the- Tell me what you told me on the phone. I'm just gonna. <laughs> Smash, okay. I mean, you have to say why. I mean, what, why do you want to smash Chloe Bailey? I don't want to smash Chloe Bailey. I it would. says smash. It says I would smash Chloe Bailey. It says you would. I would. 
Oh, it doesn't say you want to. No, nah, well, I would. But you would. I would, yeah. You would what? I would want to. Do what? <laughs> hey, yo, come on, Jay. Okay, no, but like, I saw her in person this day at the Grammys. Mm-hmm. Um, real, she's hot. So you think she's beautiful? Yeah, she bad. Cole Bailey bad, for sure. I mean, she probably watches the show. You want to say bad. anything? Oh, God. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, this next one, I know she just had a baby, but you know. Sexy Red. Sexy Red. red. Sexy red is, I mean, I... It's, I, I mean, I, I love Sexy Red. I love your music. I think you're incredible, but she's not, she's not my type. She's not your type. Not my type. Is it just that um, mm-hmm. you don't want her to say fuck her baby daddy if you drop one off? <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah, I just, I just don't think. She, I'm just not. You know, you know what's crazy? It's like She was, she used to be my type when I was like 17, 18. Really? Yeah, like I dated women that like had the whole face piercings and all that shit. Like I'm just not. So you've been there, done that? Yeah, I just, I'm not into Okay. But her music is fire and she seemed like a really dope person for sure. I met this next artist recently. She's gorgeous. Tyler. Oh yeah, Tyler can get it. Tyler, Tyler can get it? Tyler can get it for sure. Like today? She can get it. She can get it. She can get it. Oh, okay. Yeah. What about her do you like? What about her? I mean, she seems, she looked petite. She got a pretty ass face. Um, South African accent. The accent, the skin tone. She be, she gorgeous. She can get it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, this next one isn't single just yet, but might be soon. Carisha. Carisha? Carisha not my type. At all? She like like physically. Well, you have to do a pass. You have to say pass. Then. Yeah, yeah. Physically, physically, you know, she go. She, I don't know if it's just her. Her like, I don't know her as a person, but like from what I see, like just how, like I don't know. She's my. She, I don't know. I probably wouldn't. She's a nice girl, but what about her is not your type. Um, the whole city girl thing. Yeah, I think it's just her. It's just uh, like she's just not my type as far as her personality, but she's gorgeous though. Mm. You like her personally. She cool. She cool? Yeah. All right, so bad. Pa- oh, smash. Smash. Uh, smash. Yeah, she okay. cool. Yeah, she you cool. like her personally. So if I would like her personality, she cool. Yeah, yeah. she cool. Yeah. All right. Um, would you go to a Diddy party tonight? <laughs> Yo, why are you just... <laughs> why are you asking? Is this part of the question? I'm passing no, I'm on that I'm just wondering if you would, I just thought about it. I forgot to ask you earlier since we're here. I'm passing on that. Come on, yeah, my nigga. Okay. Don't ask me He's not me. going. Okay. I'm not going to. Um, all right, this next person, she's single, Lori Harvey. Oh, Lori Harvey, for sure. Lori Harvey's bad. What is it about Lori Harvey that drives you all crazy? I drive you all. I mean, look at her. She's gorgeous. Lori Harvey's gorgeous. She's, she's a beautiful woman. Yeah. Do you like that she has the ability to move on when you guys are done? Um, yeah, why not? Yeah. I'm, I'm the same way. Hmm. So you guys have one thing in common. Yeah. Lori Harvey's, Lori Harvey's gorgeous, for sure. Oh, she date dancer? No, they broke up. She's oh, single. Where? This game is really helping you to shoot your shot, by the oh, way. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I don't need it. Because t- people do watch my shot. Yeah, I don't need. I don't, I'm good. I, I don't, but if she slides in your DM, you'll open it. For sure. And for slide sure. back. Yeah, for sure. And invite her to Boston. For sure. Would you sit courtside with her? For sure. I'm sitting courtside for sure. Would you have raw sex with her? <laughs> Yo, come on, G. I'm just trying oh, to see the level of trust you have already for her. I mean, you don't know her like that. No, she good. I don't, you know what I mean? I'm on prep, so raw yeah. sex isn't something I'm I I'm on prep, though. We could chill. We don't got to, we could just hang out. Just I mean, take her to the yoga store? Take her store. to the game, relax, chill. We don't got to Put her on the bus? Put her on the bus, you feel me? We can hang out, listen, we can vibe. That's it. I'm not, you know, I'm not thirsty and no shit like that. We can chill. I'm cool. Do people know that your name are on your pillows? That my name is on my yeah. pillow? Um... I post. I feel like I posted my, my son sleeping on my bed with my name on my pillow. Did you do that so that way when the girls are there, they can remember who house they at? Or <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't be bring. I don't really. Be, I don't bring shorties to my crib like that though. You don't. Nah, smart. Like, I'm super private. Huh? That's why you ain't never seen no messy shit about me. I don't really. I don't do that. Shit. I asked you. About, I gotta really fuck with you. Huh? I asked you about your name being Future before, but then now Joyner Lucas. How did you get the name Joyner Lucas? Joyner Lucas is really my name. You know. 
Um, that's, that's, that's my government. I changed. Are you related to Frank Lucas? I I I, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> he was a gangster. Yeah, I mean, I thought I could be. He's from Boston too, so you know what I mean. Never know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay, this next person you follow her on Instagram, Lala, friend to the show. Yeah. Friend in real life. Yeah. She's watching. Shout out to Lala. This isn't a shout out show. This is a smasher party. Yeah, for sure. You a smash? Come on. Easy. She's single. Why? I mean, why haven't you slid her DMs? Easy. <laughs> she, easy. she got the green on too. Ain't that with the colors of the Celtic? La, shout out to La. La is dope, man. She's a, she, 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 she's bad. Oh, you know her? <laughs> nah, nigga. I don't know her. I don't know. I don't know her like that, but I. But you know what I mean. Why you just start smiling so? Because she cool people. Uh, a lot of cool people. Like I, I mean, I know her, so yeah. I know she's cool. But like, like I know, I know her, but like, like I, like I, she cool people. Like I know her as a person. She cool. She cool people. Shout she's single. Huh? She older than you too. No? Yeah, she older than me too. You say you like cougars. <laughs> you know what? Lala's an ambassador at Airbnb. Y'all can get a house anywhere you want for the weekend. Anyway. Just shout trying to think to, about out, you shout economically. Out, shout out to La. Okay. You know, nowadays, guys like women who swallow, and this one does. Next. <laughs> Megan Fox. But she swallows blood. She, she believes like her and her partner should swallow each other's blood. Okay. Yeah. Um, what's that word? I mean, you have the whole album with the blood on it. She would lick your face. No, okay, cool. Maybe like uh, Megan could have got it when she was in Transformers. Like around that time, she could have got it. She ain't it. that one no more. Yeah. Okay. Uh, speaking of Transformers, this person just, I'm sorry, she was snatched recently, and she's single, too, and she's a friend of mine. I could hook it up. Mariah, Mariah, come on, that's legendary right there, nigga. That's, that's legend. Let's go. Do you guys call women of that age vintage pussy still? Because I saw that somewhere. Somebody said that. The vintage pussy? Because I think, I, when I think of vintage pussy, I'm thinking like Cher. Yeah. Right? I don't really call, I don't, I don't, I don't call it that. You don't? Nah. What do you call it? An Uber? <laughs> <laughs> nah. I just don't call it that. Okay. Um, the next one? We talked about it already. Coil Ray. Oh, Coil Ray. Coil Ray. Coil Ray. But I smash. Because Coil Ray. I'm a little bit like. Because uh, Coil Ray is like. Maybe one night after the club? She's not really my type. Okay. You feel me? But she's not my type. She she's gorgeous. You know what I mean? Yeah. But she just like she's not my type. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna pass on court. Sorry. Okay. This person's recently single. Yeah. Larsa Pippen. I'm passing on Larsa Pippen. Yeah. Yeah. I'm passing on Larsa. Why? I just I don't know. I just I just I don't, I don't know. I seen an interview with Larsa the other day, and I just I don't like I don't know if she like she's just not the type of shorty that I just I'm good. She's a vibe. She's a vibe. We'll all hang out one day, and you know I'll let you fill it out. I love Larsa. All right, this last one we saved the best for last. Scissor. Easy. So now listen, I'm Easy. your friend. Trust me on this. Easy. Trust me on this. Scissor can get it. Say the I things you say when we're on the phone. When I'm with you, how can I snooze in this moment? So you ain't snoozing on SZA. SZA's gorgeous. What is it about SZA that drives you crazy? Mm, don't say that. She drives me crazy. Man. It ain't she drives me crazy. I just think that SZA's just, she just fire. I can say she's gorgeous. She's just fire. She's sexy. She's gorgeous. She, you know. She's um, super talented. Her voice, like she just, SZA just fire. Mm. I gotta think for SZA. I'm sorry. It's just way I just. I know. I mean, I've never seen you light up for anybody. I, I uh, fuck with SZA. No, nah, I mean, just SZA just lit. I fuck with SZA. So if she's watching. This. What would you say to SZA? How can I snooze <laughs> when I wait to? Not everybody in the background swaying. How can I snooze and miss the moment? You just uh, okay, join her. Come back to the interview. Join her. Like I do. Join her. Okay. Yeah. Listen. Um, well, first of all, I want to say I've said this to you yeah. in person. I just said it the other night at the dinner. 
I said everybody, I told Rihanna I was not going to cry in front of her, and I did, and I, I, I held myself together. Yeah, I, I wanted to say, my fans know, yeah. you gifted me the necklace. I didn't wear it today with uh, my brother's face on it, yeah. as you know. Uh, I appreciate that, but I just wanted to thank you. And thank you just for being a real one. And, you know, just, I don't know, we've developed a real relationship uh, just from getting to know one another, respecting each other's differences, and sure. you know, I appreciate that. And but before you 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 leave, since you just shot your shot at SZA, I got something else for you. One more guess. Oh, that's just one more that guess. was shooting my shot at. I mean, SZA. you just sang her whole song. Cause I love SZA. What's that? Oh, that's fire. The pool stick too. Let's go. And it says what? Not now. I'm busy, my nigga. You can show the show the yeah. How can I sing oh, when I'm with you? How can I sing and miss the moment? <laughs> this is gonna go viral on TikTok, Nobody by the way. Body do body like I do. Okay, so uh, is is yeah. SZA performing at Joiner Fest? Because you know you could do a co-headliner situation. Listen, you looking for a co-headliner? SZA can perform at Joiner Fest. She could perform at Joiner's house. She could perform at Joiner's car. She can perform. I love me some SZA. Okay, so tell everybody about Joiner Fest because that's going down this year. It's the first annual. Um, no, it's we've done it before. Second, a second, second, okay. second annual, yeah. But tell them, Joiner Fest, um, June twenty second. Right, straight ahead. Straight, straight ahead. Yes. <laughs> June twenty second, Joiner Fest. We lining it up right now. Tickets will be live soon. I go on tour. Uh, from May 11th through June 22nd. That's a Not Now I'm Busy tour. Not Now I'm Busy, the album just dropped. Make sure you guys check it out. How can I snooze when I'm with you? Go get the album. We're going to get out of here before he tears my set up. Snooze and miss the moment. You just too important. Nobody do body like I do. I can't snooze. <laughs> When you're with me. Okay, bye, Joiner. Goodbye. Have Give it up for Joiner. <laughs> Hey, thanks so much for watching the Jason Lee Show. To watch more episodes like that, click right here. And if you want to see more, subscribe below and click that notification bell.